Okay, we live. No, no. You get a notification? I got a notification. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Good. Cool. Are you seeing me? Because I just see my picture. Uh. I don't see you. I seen, I seen you. At first, I seen you. Uh, but now I'm not uh, seeing you. Hold on. I'm gonna fix everything. I'm like, okay. I see Nicole on this one when I'm watching. Okay, bam. Okay. Um, Nicole, speak right quick. Testing, testing. Hello. Yeah, why is I, your I see the green person? <laughs> yeah, I just see your your profile. Hold on. I see your profile. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me see if I can work. <clears throat> do you see? Do you see somewhere on your uh, on your thing where it says "Present to Everyone"? No. Okay. Now I do. Um. Well, it went away. Okay. There we go. You see it now? I tapped on it. You. Yeah, I see you, but it's only showing your profile. Hold on. Okay, speak now. Hello, hello? Yeah, man. Hold on. Look, hey, family. They coming in the room. Well, Come on in the room. While while we wait on to get Nicole uh, situated, uh, Paulina, introduce your uh, your YouTube channel and also give them some information just in case if uh, you know you decide to have a conversation. Matter of fact, O'Shea, hit me right quick, bro. Call me on my uh, seven seven three line right quick, O'Shea. O'Shea already coming in here with twenty five dollars. Come Good. on, O'Shea. All right, now. Hey, Come O'Shea, on. Hit me right quick. You know, I like me some O'Shea. You know, I like me some O'Shea. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hit me on that. Hit me on that seven seven three line right quick. <laughs> O'Shea, man. See, I told you these comments. O'Shea, you are a mess. Okay. Yeah, as a man, I want to trick. Shout out to Nicole, <laughs> Miss NBA. <laughs> he, hey, O'Shea, gonna say, hey, boo. Hold on. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, O'Shea. O'Shea, like. Yeah, I think that maybe I should add you again. Hold on, man. Welcome, everyone. My name, for those who don't know, is Paulina Johnson, MBA. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, please follow me on all social media. Facebook and Instagram at Achieve Against All Odds. That is all one word, Achieve Against All Odds. Search for me, the hashtag Achieve Against All Odds or Paulina Johnson NBA. <laughs> Nicole's next. Nicole, you can go ahead. I still endeavor to do this. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Nicole Michelle. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. Nicole Michelle and Nicole Michelle page two. Um, and I am the femininity influencer for the inner beauty movement. Um, and that is um, a movement designed to focus on young black women reconnecting with their feminine core. And um, you can find us all over Facebook, just type in inner beauty movement. 
I have an all women's group set up for women's healing. And uh, I do have a book on Amazon. It's been there for quite some time. I'm running a special. Um, if you buy the book, then you get 25 minutes of one-on-one -on -one counseling with me. And I'm on YouTube, um, and I just uh, released the Ladylike Lessons today. So if you join the Inner Beauty TV by Mich Nicole Michelle, like and subscribe that. Hit the bell for notifications um, so that you can get every Ladylike lesson um, that rolls out. And that's just for the people to get a kind of taste of the movement and what we're about. Um, but, of course, the best... Um, breakdown of the movement will be to get the book so you can kind of get a foundation and um, get started and reconnecting with your femininity. I like that. I like that. Um, well, to get things uh, started and come right in right away, you know why I even do this because I'm still endeavoring for you guys to see, because I want you to be blessed. I want you to see Nicole's beautiful face. You know what I mean? So well, go ahead. It's late, so don't even worry about it. We just, what I'm saying is more important than our look, so. Okay, okay. Well, um, with that being said, Paulina, I wanted to uh, start with you because of course, you was the one, you know what I mean, that actually wanted to do this topic. And when you said it, I was compelled to do it because I thought this would not only be great for the women to be able to express what they desire, but also for the men to hear information, you know what I mean, that they don't know or they can be compelled to be greater men so they can be more of an asset, you know what I mean, to a woman. So uh, with that being said, you know, what are, what are the things that you want or you need, you know what I mean, out of a man? So thank you. And first, I didn't even thank you, Sin. I really want to thank you for really giving me this opportunity to use your platform to give everyone a chance to see the voice that has been calling in. So, um, but anyway, I was thinking about this because I think, you know, in life, as you mature and get older, you realize the advice you wish you had when you were younger. And I know um, as a woman, it's hard for us to really communicate to men what it is that we want and need in a um, non-emotional way, right? We are either in our emotions after he's done something we didn't like, or um, we are at a place where we just fed up, right? And so we come at a place where like, this is what I need from you, and this is what I want from you. And so when I was thinking about what is it that if I had an opportunity to share with a mass audience of men, what is it that I would want them to know that women truly really want and need from them. And the first area that I thought was strength. A woman desires a man that is very strong. And I'm talking about strength um, in every area of his life. First of all, mentally, right? We want a man that is strong mentally. One that when we face with whatever challenges, you know, you know, money not right, you know, job losses, you know, a health challenge that he rises to the occasion and he is mentally strong. He is there to set the temperature and the atmosphere for the woman. You know, baby, don't freak out. I got this. You know, instead of him looking at her, you know, saying, you know, what us going to do? He's like, this is the plan and this is how we overcome. So when I thought about, you know, this topic, I said, man, you know, me need to understand. And his strength is really about having that mental strength because my belief is, when you are strong mentally, you can really overcome anything that you're faced with. So I don't know. What are your thoughts, Nicole? Um, well, in my movement, I t try to reintroduce the terms um, masculine and feminine to young women because a lot of them, like what you said, they have not been introduced to those terms at, uh, growing up. And uh, a lot of our young women only grew up with a mother in the home. And um, so they are not familiar with being feminine and recognizing masculinity. And matter of fact, our society is training um, young women to fear masculinity, true masculinity, and it's teaching our boys to repress masculinity in themselves. So when we have topics like this, we have to be completely thorough and break down what we really want and the word that I hear you um, really talking about in everything that you just described is masculinity. You want a man that is a leader, 
Um, he does not run from his role as a leader. Um, and he is able to step up into the role as a provider and a protector of those he loves. That is a masculine man. And um, throughout my movement, um, young women are coming to me en masse telling me that they are overwhelmingly wanting black men and they're overwhelmingly wanting masculine men which is completely different than what we hear in the media we hear that sisters are wanting to swirl they're wanting to date each other they're not wanting to get married at all and and i beg to differ sisters deep down they want a black masculine man so when i talk to male dominated audiences i'm going to tell the man you need to brush up on your masculinity get around men who are teaching that thoroughly, not teaching you how to play women, not teaching you how to get them in the bed, because all of that stuff is temporary. That's the easy part. It really is. Being a man, a masculine man, is the toughest job a man will ever do in life. Mm -hmm. I agree. <clears throat> um, shout you let, let me, before I say this, <laughs> shout out to Righteous. Righteous then came up in here with $10. He knew that a nigga had ran out of Kool-Aid. Bro is letting God use him. He coming through. Shouts out to him for the $10, man. You know what I mean? <clears throat> My nigga Nogden came up in here with nine, $9.99. Hold on. Let me speed up because I know I missed. Uh, OG for OG then came up in here with the, uh, with the five. You know what I mean? Randy then came up in here with the 10. You know what I mean? Much respect to you. And your platform, big bro. Bro, blessings to you. Um, hold on. And the rest of y'all didn't say that. You just sent in the money. Break yourself for these likes. Break yourself right now for these shares. I got Nicole and Pauline on here right now. You know what I mean? I'm really blessing y'all. I got two beautiful black women. And not only are they beautiful as far as appearance, you know, but their intelligence is equivalent with their appearance. And I'm blessing you on tonight. So break yourself for the likes. Break yourself for the shares. And if you in the corner, nigga, come about the corner and make a comment. Stop being shy. You know, and making yourself known to everybody. Stop getting in the corner and shit. You know what I mean? Come on out the corner. Yeah, you too. Hey, make, make a comment. Hey, 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 cool. P, hey, P, let's do it like we do in church. Hey, we want all the deacons. We need y'all to give $100. <laughs> no. $100, no, no. You can no. go up to the deacon's uh, side or to a special Press seat. a one. Press yeah, one. Yeah. But Press here one. at full, but here at full gospel stuff down right around the corner, set it down on the corner. The irrefutable truth, full gospel. You know what I mean? Missionary uh, in the church. You know we do not sit up there and tell anybody. You know what to give. We just allow the spirit of the game to put on their heart to provide. If they feel that they got some G-A-M-E, then they're going to let the one that gave them the G-A-M-E G-A-I-N. So, you know what I mean? We don't want to sit up there and tell them the amount of currency. We just want to encourage them to get into a continuity of giving that currency. Amen. So, hold on. Let me, let me ask. Tonight, I need you to press that one. <laughs> um, let, me, let me say this. Okay. You said they want a masculine man. Yes. Okay. So for those, you know, because a guy might come up in here, he might be hearing words and just might be just going with the flow and shit like that. What is a masculine man? And, not, and I'm not asking according to Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. I'm right. asking according to your infinite mind. What is a masculine man? Define that in your own words tonight. Well, I'm glad you asked because my very first ladylike lessons was breaking down the very basics of masculine and feminine um, so that people can kind of get an idea. Masculine is basically a logical thinker. Women, we come from emotions. We primarily operate from emotions. We have logic, obviously, um, but our first inclination uh, is to operate from the feminine side. A masculine man, his first inclination, um, his first instinct is to operate from the logical side. Um, typically, um, what's going on now is you see a lot of men uh, operating from emotions, um, and that's kind of counterintuitive. 
Um, and we have to in, let men start operating logically because that's when they operate their best and that's when they're problem solving. Masculinity is about problem solving. It's about, it's analytical. Um, they like challenges. Men like to build and create. Um, uh, that's pretty much the basics of it. Um, they are uh, the responders to feminine energy. Feminine women are the prime motivating force for a masculine man. There's nothing on this planet that can motivate a masculine man than a, a feminine woman, period. Um, and this is what's throwing relationships off because you have a lot of women who are operating like men um, in their masculine energy, which, you know, we'll probably touch on eventually, but that's what's going on. And so men are turned off and they don't really know why. They just know that after sex, there's not much interest. Um, and that's because when you have two people thinking alike in the same energy, they can't occupy the same space. Even in homosexual and lesbian relationships, there is a masculine and feminine energy. People have to understand that and embrace that. The quickest they, the quickest uh, that um, black people in particular get, get and understand, grasp those terms, masculine and feminine, and decide which one they're going to be predominantly because we all have a little of the other in us. That's okay. We have to decide which one we're going to operate from. And once we figured that out, then now we know who to attract and who we're not going to work with. Um, and that's what's going on is we have people who are narcissists who are both, they're feminine when it, when they feel like it, they're masculine when they feel like it typically, you know, women who work in the work workforce, they haven't mastered, the feminine part of it after they leave work, you know, for an example, when you have that type of dynamic going on, that wreaks havoc on a relationship because, um, you know, the man doesn't know how to respond. And if he's masculine, he's completely turned off. So it's important that men not only understand masculinity, but embrace the term, not be afraid to be a man. Black men have been conditioned in society to be afraid to be who they naturally are. They've been taught to repress themselves, that the only thing that they're good for is, you know, with a ball or singing or dancing. That's what they've been told that they're good at. And that's absolutely, totally false. That's what other groups want black men to do because they recognize, recognize how outstanding black men can be once they embrace their masculinity. This is why they're raping the continent of Africa. You know, I could go on and on and on, but black men need to embrace their masculinity because that's when they are able to be the best. And that means we need them to step up and be leaders of the home. Um, and we can talk all night about that, but pretty much masculinity is uh, bouncing off the feminine energy and um, and so my whole movement is about helping women embrace femininity because once they do that, they trigger or enhance or bring out, motivate the masculine man, all those terms above, and cause him to, to be the best man that she really wants him to be. And then now they can form a healthy relationship. Mm. And okay. can, I, can I say something? When I think of a masculine man, I think of a man who has two characteristics he's a teacher and he's also a decision maker and so for me you know when I think of masculinity masculinity I think of a man that you know he can teach whoever he's around something whatever it is he's going to enlighten you know his environment and he's also going to be a decision making because you said problem solving decision making you know sometimes decisions may not come out with the effect you wanted it to be the result you wanted it to be but you have to own it, right? You have to own it and take responsibility, so. Okay. Right, women have to step back and allow men to lead. And I'm gonna say a cuss word here, it's called submissive. Um, I, I bring this, I, every time I say this word on my page, the, the meme goes viral because, and I get a lot of resistance from sisters and I'm like, you absolutely cannot have a relationship with a masculine man, a good one anyway, outside the bedroom, if you're not submissive. It's, it's not gonna happen, forget about it, forget it. It's not going to happen. You have to be submissive to him in order for him to lead you because that's his position. His job is to lead. He can't protect a woman who isn't submissive to him. For example, if you're out and about and um, someone 
attacks you or offends you or, or steps on your toe or something like that, which causes him to want to protect you. And you say, hey, you stepped on my toe or you bumped into me. You send this to the person who did it and you're with him. And uh, he's observing this and he says, no, 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 baby, I got this. I'm going to handle this. And you, no, 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 I got this. I got this. I'm going to tell this MF off. I'm gonna, and you're not submissive to him and allowing him to handle it because that's his job as a masculine man is to protect his loved ones. But because you're not submissive, um, you've taken over his role. His, his job is to protect you. And because you're not submissive, he can't protect you. So you pretty much uh, open season for someone else to attack you. Um, if you don't follow his lead, his instructions around the house, and P probably will take this, you know, the, the square way, and then there's the pimp way. But really, when it comes to submissiveness, it's almost kind of the same. If you don't follow his lead, then you kind of you kind of mess up your own process because as a uh, uh, as masculine, feminine, you're a team. There is no. I'm better than you. I'm bigger than you. And being submissive doesn't mean you're not intelligent or smart. It just means that for the team's sake, I'm acquiescing to the masculine energy and allowing him to lead and protect me because I don't have his muscles. I'm not analytical. I'm operating from feelings. And he's operating on, it's 50 people in here. If I take this dude, two more dudes are probably going to jump in. And I mean, he's thinking logically and she's thinking, I got hurt. I want to lash out. Cause she's in her feelings and he's thinking now nah, it's 50 people. We got to try to get out of this. You know, you know, he's thinking logically on how to maneuver the, the situation. So it's important that women appreciate the logic, the analytical skills that men have, because that's what protects us. Uh, and then men have to understand that women are not crazy. We are emotional and there has to be an emotional person in the relationship, in the family that can interpret everybody's emotions. Um, if we're all thinking like men, nobody's soft, nobody's warm, somebody's crying, nobody cares. You know, that's the woman to say, hey, something's off with you. What's wrong? Let's get into it. What, you know, how are you feeling? And the man is, what are you thinking? So this is the way that you can test yourself. If you are masculine, you're primarily, I think, I think you start a sentence off. Well, I think, I think, um, feminine energy is you start off the sentence typically I feel I feel this way I don't feel like doing that I feel I feel I feel everything comes from feelings so that's the litmus test for everybody is to to understand what you are um and then kind of embrace it and then if you are not comfortable being that energy then kind of learn what the other energy is and be one or the other so that you can have a healthy relationship mm -hmm. and it's good to keep in mind too always look for the balance. I know that men are supposed to be, you know, governed by their mind and their thought process, but there is also a time that a man must feel. He must feel, right? Um, it's, it's, and I really liken it to this scenario. When you go to the hospital and you have a certain surgery, you know, you come out of surgery and they'll say, what's your pain level? You know, a man has to be able to effectively feel so that he can communicate what his pain level is. Right. It's not a, you know, we're going to play mind reading games and just really take people for and put them in this box and say, this is how everyone should, you know, move and walk when we are individually made differently. So so my thing is always look for a balance. You know, a man is very balanced. You know, he's balanced. It's not just driving, you know, driving like a freight train. He's very, very balanced. And I think that's another thing to to note that, you know. When you, you look for a man to be balanced, you look for a man to be because, you know, we we can be a, we can deal with the drill sergeants. Right. And I think understand me. Me and need to understand it is a, a, a woman's. Now, I don't know about young young girls, but it is a woman's desire. Let me look at you when I say this to submit to a man. I know uh, it may uh, sound weird. Wait a minute, hold on. Say that again. <laughs> it is a woman's that desire. Need to be, that need to be a song. Desire. <laughs> to submit to a man, period. It's just her desire, right? The problem becomes when a man is not in his rightful mindset, thought process, actions, that things get thrown off. You know, we we grow up in a society, I'm just saying this, we grow up in a society where the, the women are raised like men and the men are coddled. 
right? And so, therefore, when you grow up and you get in, you know, adult relationships, everything is off, right? So then a woman says, you know, I need somebody to handle things the way I would handle them because she was raised in a different way. So you got to keep that in mind. It's really about the dialogue that we are sharing and that men have to first put in that work within themselves before they try to jump into a relationship. So you, If you can't be the CEO or the leader of your own life, men, there's no reason you need to attach to a woman. She won't submit. She just won't, right? If she doesn't see you handling your life in a way that says, I'm a leader, I'm a decision maker, I'm a problem solver, you know, I am leading with logic, I am, you know, balanced in my thinking, she won't submit. And and no matter what you guys think, I'm telling you, it is the woman's des a woman's desire. Is it, it makes her it brings her joy to submit to a man. So that's mm. <laughs> no wait a minute, wait a minute, because now this is sounding like good R and B song. <laughs> she didn't really like really went there. It's a woman's joy, you know, like <laughs> she got joy unspeakable. Unspeakable. To the, the commandments of a man, you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, now, uh, Nicole has said something earlier. I wanted to ask her a question. And, and by the way, the links that I used from my Sinful to P Views uh, channel, I want you guys to click on that link. If you're not subscribed to Paulina, you can subscribe to her right now. I'm getting ready to put Nicole's link to her channel as well in the comment section. So you guys can go over there and subscribe. I also want you to hit the bell. Don't just hit the subscribe Please button. Hit that bell. So when they go live, you can get the notification and join the conversation that they're having in the chat. But Nicole has said something earlier about earlier about um, creating. He's always he's creating. And well, my question is, what is he creating? When you know, when you said that, you know what I mean. What is he creating? When I asked you to define what a masculine man is, you said he's creating. And I want to know what is he creating. Well, let me apologize. Let me substitute that word. Uh, for building. For building, exactly. I was going to say. Well, um, let, me, like, hey, let me. I let can me, create a, the moon in the sky. Is, I'm going to let, let y'all do y'all thing. But actually, that was that was a better word. If you actually allow the spirit of God to even minister to you concerning, you know, creating. And then you think about the word. That's all you have to do was expound and say something profound about what you said, and you could have just took off just off that creative. You had to switch up with the bill, but go ahead. Well, uh, well, typically, when I'm giving just basic definitions, feminine energy is creative, we're more free-flowing. Masculine energy, they build. They're focused on their legacy. They're focused on building something to benefit other people. See, masculine men are always thinking about the group other people, their loved ones, their job, their coworker, everything is about other people. And that's what a lot of women don't understand about masculine men. They're very uh, generous and they're very uh, focused on project. They like projects. Anytime you see a man that's unmotivated, um, chances are he's either a lazy masculine man who's unmotivated or he's a beta male. Um, typically masculine men are motivated. They looking for something to do, even if it's just stupid, but they have to find something to do to feel like they are achieving something, which is why you have a lot of unmotivated men on the PS4s all the time, because they feel like at the end of the day, they've done something to them because they're unmotivated. You have men who will push a line more and you're like, why is he still out there doing that? I thought he did that. He has to feel like he's, accomplishing something he has to feel like he's building something he's being so this is why being out of work for a masculine man really hurts him um emotionally um they'll never really sh they don't really show that well to women but it really hurts them uh their masculinity because that's that's what they're defined by making money providing being the go-to um, the buck stops with him. And if he's out of work, he feels less than a man because he's unable to do what he's supposed to do. Uh, beware, of, ladies, beware of any man who's out of work and he doesn't feel some type of way. That's a man you don't want to get pregnant by. <laughs> <laughs> if he's out of work and he's not stressing, 
and he's not scratching his head like I gotta do something. Let me go drive Uber. Let me let me you know fix some people's yards. Let me do something to feel like I'm contributing. If if you don't have a man that's hustling like that, or he's so focused that he if a man says um you know I'm focused on myself right now. I'm really not trying to be in a, a long term relationship. I'm trying to get myself together, ladies. That's a masculine man. Let him do him. Be and because get out of the way. You know, of course, he's, you know, if you give him benefits, that's not going to benefit you. But he's in his, in that moment, he's been masculine. He's saying, I'm focused on building something right now. I'm getting myself together and I'm preparing myself to be a man, to do what a man does. And women, we kind of get our emotions in a way like, oh, no, but we'll be a good couple if you just give me time and I'll be there for you. I'll let you drive my car. I'll give you money. I'll pay your bill. And that's not what a masculine man needs. He needs you to be like, okay, whatever you need me to do, I'll be over here. Uh, uh, he needs that emotional support, that nurturing. I just did a video today about the difference between feminine nurturing and mothering. It's a huge difference. And if you don't understand it with a masculine man, you could push him away for good. Uh, or you could be in a, a relationship with a user. So um, <laughs> masculine men are builders. They're all about the end product, producing. That's the word I was looking for. I couldn't think of it earlier. Producers. Masculine men are producers. If you're a man ever says, I'm a man, I need a woman to be submissive to me. You need to look at his resume. What has he produced? The fruit uh, of his life should speak. Besides kids, what has he produced? The fruit of his life should speak who he is right. as a Produce. We looking at tangible things. Is he has he bought a house and paying for it? Um, has he started a business? Um, is he how long has he been on his job? <laughs> right. You know, is he contributing to organizations? Like, what is he producing that entitles him to a woman being submissive? What we have is a lot of women being submissive to folks in and out of jail. PS4, Madden Kings, you know, that's the wrong, you put that submissiveness energy to the wrong dudes. And then when it doesn't turn out the way you want it, then all men are dogs. Uh, he doesn't know, he, he doesn't know what he wants. He's a user. He just, no, you put the wrong type of energy into the wrong man at the wrong time sometimes, uh, or you should have just kept it moving. You know, or you give a lot of submissiveness to a man who's already told you, look, I'm focused on building right now. I don't have anything to give a woman in a relationship. I'm just trying to do me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. He's saying, I'm, I'm focusing on me. I'm doing me. And then you still laying up with him. You still having babies and hopes that's going to change. You, you know, you guilt tripping him. Your mama black, you know, you need to be with me. Um, you know, you had sex with me. Let's be in a relationship. You, you guilt tripping that man into being in a relationship. He's already told you he's focused. Um, and so that's why I tell young ladies, you know, pay attention to what men, men tell you what's going on with them. We just don't want to listen. We don't want to hear it because we want to hear what we want to hear. And that's, you know, that's coming from emotions. Mm. Paulina, did you want to, did you want to, uh, Mm -mm, I had nothing to add on. Okay. Amen. Okay. Amen to it. She just she just came through. Yeah, she did. <laughs> she really did. Now, one thing I do want to say is, did you just hear this one? Hear this woman say, uh, "P.S. Madden Kings." Yes. P.S. Madden Kings. Yes. yes. I didn't yes. even know it was such thing, but okay. Um, what I want to ask is this. Because I'm uh, definitely allowing you guys to speak because I know you're speaking, you know, for the women. And not only that, you're giving information to men, you know what I mean? And a lot of them guys like, damn, I do need to get out of my mama's house. But damn, I do be playing, <laughs> I do be playing Madden too much. The basement, boys. <laughs> da damn, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I do need to stop, you know, treating women to McDonald's. I need to step my game up and take it to the Olive Garden. Take it to somewhere special like Leona's. You know what I mean? Maybe I need to set my game up. You know what I mean? I want to be able to take my woman to uh, Olive Garden like a real man. You know what I mean? <laughs> if we go to McDonald's, you know, I want to be able to get her a value meal too instead of her looking at me eat the one. So I need to step this up. Maybe niggas might see this be like, no, I need to step it up. So let me ask this. Because I'm hearing, I do just want to slide this in. Because I'm going to let y'all preach now. But I do want to slide this in. 
to the women that want these things, okay? You want these because there's a lot of women, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I want a man to have this, and he got to have this. He got to have that. You know what I'm saying? And I was, as I was taught in the word, the revelation is in the why. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, that's how revelations come. That's how information comes as to why. And I'm not saying this to the whole population of women because we know why. But some of you want men to have these things. You want a man to have a degree from Harvard. You want him to stay in a prestigious neighborhood. You want him to be able to speak in different vernaculars, have a sex life that's the best definition spectacular. You want him to have all these great things, you know, going on. But what do you have to offer this man Mm -hmm. other than some temporary pleasure that comes from the beautiful pussy that the Most High has blessed you with? What do you have... You know what I mean? Other than your physical appearance to offer a man. You know, because there's so many women, they say, I want this, I want that. That's just like a nigga going to the car dealership and he say, man, give me the phantom in the year. And they be like, okay, I'm okay. You know, okay, big dog. You know what I'm saying? You want that phantom in the year? Okay, well, how much you uh, ready to put on it, man? What that credit looking like? Oh, I ain't got no credit. I ain't got no money, but I'm fine, I'm handsome, and I would look good in the Phantom, you know what I mean? And I'm Instagram ready. And they gonna sit up there and have that motherfucker escort his ass off their property for sitting over there wasting his time. So basically, he wasn't able to fulfill the necessities to have this vehicle. And that's just like it is when it comes to men. Certain women want, you want a man that's handsome. You want, you know what I mean, a, a, a man to have a dick, you know what I mean, to basically uh, make you come until the rapture comes. You want a man to take you on one of the best mental, physical, emotional, spiritual safaris that you've ever been on in your life. You know, you want a man to bless you with these things, but you're not official and beneficial. And I'm not speaking to Paulina and Nicole, but I know some ladies that's in the comment section, and not just in the comment section, but it's going to be ladies that's going to see this video in the future. And they're going to be like, you right. That's what I want. I want a real man. And I should have this. And I should have that. But what, what's your credit looking like? Mm-hmm. And I ain't just talking about, you know what I mean, your credit as far as purchasing things. I'm talking about your credit in the streets. What's your credibility looking like? Yeah. What's your individuality looking like? What is your intellectual capabilities looking like? How are you beneficial to a man, you know, it's good that you're able to make him come, but do you have anything that's going to make <laughs> him come up? You know, it's good that you can, you know, fornicate, but do you have anything that you can educate? You provide a mental climax mm. as well as a physical climax. You know, some of these women, you know, they're just good for producing, you know, sex. Mm. They're good for producing great sexual times, but as we all know, great sexual times last for a moment. It doesn't oh. last for a movement. So what do you have? This be- Ladies, I want you to ask yourself, what do you have that's beneficial to the movement of a man? A woman is supposed to be able to produce what the man has introduced her to and create greater. That's what women do, not just producing children, but right. they bring things into life. Not just life as far as children, but bringing life. You're supposed to take that man's information and you're supposed to produce it. So, you know what I mean? If he's making daily deposits and giving you uncommon information, of giving you inspiration, giving you exhortation, helping you get to the location of success, how are you beneficial to the man? And I just want that to minister, you know, to you women. So before you up there hollering and you throwing your little phone around. That's right, Paulina. That's right, Nicole. Come through. I'm subscribing to her channel right now because she wants a masculine man. And I'm tired of these bitch ass niggas playing PS4s and shit and eating motherfucking uh, hot Cheetos and shit. Fuck that, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Step your game up. And you about to do all this hollering and screaming and you about to be cheering and you about to speak in a tongue as Casper the Friendly Ghost going to give you. But you're still not going to produce the behavior 
that you need to be producing in order to obtain and maintain this type of man. Mm-hmm. Now I don't want to talk too much because I wanted this is kind of like ladies' night. So let me, I just, but I had to slide that in there. So before you get too happy, before you leap over walls and run through troops and knock out groups because of what's being said by these two <laughs> beautiful, infinite minded women, I want you to, you know what I mean, sit your ass down and think about what the hell I just said. You know what I mean? Simplicity. <laughs> um, but getting back, what, did you, <laughs> what um, Paulina, I want to ask you. Yeah, yeah. In your past experiences, we want to get a little deep now. Get in your deep, past experiences, have you ever, can you honestly say that you've been with a man before? Now that you know wow. the definition of masculinity, you know the definition of uh, a man, you know, uh, uh, I want to know from your personal experiences, have you ever been blessed with a personal encounter, a relationship, or a marriage with a man or was you with a male that professed to be a man inside of a man's body? Um, I, I would be very honest to say that I've only been with males. I've never been with a man. That's why I'm um Hold on, you were going you were going out and I need for everybody to be blessed with what you're saying. So I need you to repeat that one more time. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, and I, I want them to hear you too. Repeat that one more time. I don't time. know if someone like turned on their computer, and then it's like I'm hearing the echo back. So no, I've got. I've been doing the same thing, and you already know. Uh, as far as me, I said no. From my experience, I am divorced, and I've only been with males. I have not been with a man. I've not. I don't know that experience. I've seen it. I've witnessed it in other people. And, you know, me being raised in the church, you know, you would think that that would be, it would be a plethora of men in the church. However, there weren't. And so my experiences have been total male experiences. But I do want to go back and say something. You know, you asked, what is a woman we should have to offer to a man? Because I really want to say something to that. And what I want to say is, as a woman... For me, I can't talk about others. You know, to me, character is very important. You know, him, a man, I'm offering him my trust of him and his trust of me. You know, I'm a I'm an honest woman. That, you know, I was made to be submissive to my husband. I know that every skill set that I have developed is just to help my future husband, you know, fulfill the vision that God has given him for his life. But that's the thing. He has to have the vision. He can't be attaching himself to a woman's vision, right? You look at a woman and you say, well, you're at this certain level. You know, I can ride, you know, your wave. That isn't going to work out. So for me, I can say, yeah, you know, I want a man that's financially stable because I'm financially stable. I want a man that have attained certain materialistic things, a house, a car, you know, certain things, because that is what I'm bringing to the table. So to me, I don't endeavor to be with someone who is in a stratosphere that I'm not bringing at least that to the table. Um, As it relates to um, loyalty, I desire a man that is very loyal and because I am extremely loyal to the point um, of (laughs) disregarding myself at times because I'm being loyal to someone else. So um, I just wanted to say that, and I do want Nicole to say that um, to give a few characteristic traits that she would offer so that women who are watching this understand that, you know, you should endeavor to to bring the best you, you know, endeavoring to be with somebody and you have nothing to bring to the table. I, I believe that, you know, my professionalism is something that I bring to the table. I believe my sense of humor. I believe, you know, my beauty inside, not focusing on the outside. I believe my nurturing, that's something that's a that's a blessing. I believe, you know, my commitment, you know, so t- those are things, you know, that, you know, if he needs something, I always, you know, the joke for me is uh there will never ever be another woman that will love a man the way I have because of my commitment. I'm I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm okay with sacrificing. That's what you do, you know, like, but again, I was raised differently. You know, I come from a southern family, so Again, I just, you know, I was raised that, you know, it's your desire. Like, it's just natural to serve your man. But, you know, go ahead, Nicole. 
We have to get that in <laughs> camera on. Rock TV, Rock TV wrote Nicole turn the camera on. <laughs> yeah, we already been there. Her? Can we, you turn I'm good right now. On, please. <laughs> It's twelve forty seven in Atlanta. Um, I'm good. <laughs> um, no, I was I prepared. Whatever y'all do. Um, no, I just wanted to add. I was on O'Shea's channel and he asked me the same thing. And I'm gonna kind of give everybody a gist of it. I want women to understand that are listening to you all uh, right now. They need to do one on one coaching with me so that we can get to the bottom of things because what I found out with a lot of sisters is they're not getting married because men don't want to marry them or they're not great women it's only one or two things they need to tweak and if they're not talking to someone that's in tune with relationships and knows what's up like me I can point out okay you just need to tweak this and that and you're good um and so that leads into what I'm getting ready to say is that a lot of women have the right mindset um they are just um, choosing. I want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to put this all on women, but I think we love hard and we want to see the good in some of these these men. Um, but we don't know when to walk away, and uh, we need to just. And, and and I'm guilty of that. I'll be transparent. Uh, you know, I when I once I fall in love, it's there, and it's hard for me to say. You know what? I'm done with him. I'm giving it all. Um, you know, but sisters, we had to learn when to walk away. And um, simple things that women can do. I, I hear a lot of things. I, I deal with women on a daily basis. And one of the things that I hear a lot is a man needs to be able to, I have a house, he need to have a house. I make 40000 he need to make double that, or he need to make that or more, and I'm this and that. All of this is great. But then when I start going over their resume, I ask them simple questions like, can you sew a button on a shirt? Right. And then they they look at me with with like deer in the headlights. I'm like something simple like, can you sew a button on a shirt? Let's say you're at the hotel and you're getting ready to go downstairs to the event. He pops the shirt on his button. I mean, he pops he sh he pops the button on his shirt, and you can't. He needs somebody to fix it right now. The concierge is, is closed. Cleaners is closed. He needs you to help him right then and there. Uh, it's, it's small things like that that. Sisters just want to overlook, and they think just cooking and having a big butt is all they need to do, and it's really not. It's, it's su such a very impactful question. Okay, well, let me before I even um, keep on talking, we have the lovely, you know, Hillary. Hillary has joined us. You know, I mean, I want everybody to take a time out right now to give God praise for the big ass, <laughs> fine, attractive, intelligent. You know what I mean? In shape, Hillary. Let's take time to give God praise for creating, you know what I mean, Hillary's big head ass. You know what I mean? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could have sat up there and, you know, gave us somebody else, but you chose to bless us with Hillary's big head ass, and we thank you for <laughs> blessing us with uh, Sister Thick. So, Hillary, Hi, have a night. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Helena. Hello. Hi, Sin. Hey, <laughs> So I had a chance to listen. And um, one thing that I feel, uh, I was listening to Sin and he mentioned, um, you know, women want all of these things, but what do you have to offer at the end of the day? Um, which is important. Um, but one of the things that first came to mind was uh, how women choose a man and um, some don't really have that growth mindset in, in mind. They don't really think for the long term. Uh, they think of for the here and the now. So I know I'm kind of coming in late to the conversation. I don't know if you guys really talked about that or just went over that, but I do know that a lot of women, um, they don't really think about what or where they might be five or 10 years from now with the same person. They just think of what they have to offer, what they look like in the moment. And, um, oftentimes that leads to something that doesn't really bear much fruit and uh you know things kind of turn they don't they don't really end up you know uh in the best situation because it's just something that's self satis self satisfying just you know here in the moment so um what do you guys think about that i agree before, hold on before y'all even came in 
My brother O'Shea just came in here talking about some who ankles can I rub from the back? <laughs> Not from the front, but from the back. Okay. Hey, do y'all want me to rub from the front? O'Shea on that good shit. He's showing you the real. He trying to sit up and rub on <laughs> your ankles from the back. And I know he wanted me to say it like that. Hillary, can O'Shea rub on your ankles from the back? The back, not the front. You ain't got nothing to do the front, but just the back part, baby. Well, um, the Magnificent says in 2018, women need to know more than so, but on the shirt they ain't gonna get no man nowhere in this day and age maybe in the 60s let me explain something to you um you everything is in technology based sometimes we need to know the basics of running a home a lot of times we take for granted simple things like being able to cook vegan being able to cook low sodium meals because our so that our husband doesn't get sick or our children don't get sick learning how to make chicken noodle soup instead of buying Campbell's there are certain things women have lost the art of being a woman if we don't learn the regain the knowledge of learning the art of being a woman and embracing femininity, what do men need us for? That's See, true. it's it's easy for uh, <laughs> it's easy for people to say, well, you don't need to sew no button on the shirt. Yeah, you do, because you may not always afford the cleaners. You may not always be able to afford premium care for your clothes. And if your woman is able to sew then get, I'm not saying that's a requirement for a wife. I'm saying these are things that you can add on to why he can commit to you over the 10 other chicks that's calling him. See, when women start breaking down, okay, what I do periodically for myself and I tell the women that I coach and I'm giving y'all free information right here, take it. You do a pros and cons of yourself. The pros, what are my pros? And be honest with yourself. Nobody's gonna look at this list but you. What are your pros? Well, I'm in shape. Put that down there. What's your cons? I need to lose 20 pounds. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just breaking this down. What about looks? Well, I'm over 40. Okay. But the cons, the, the, the pro side is that I have a lot of experience that I can bring to a relationship. The con side, um, I probably work on my credit a little bit. It's a couple of things I need to fix. The pro side is I know how to budget now. <laughs> I, I, I've got some savings you know what I mean um, uh, I, I traveled a little bit that's a pro a con is you know I haven't been outside the city I don't know anything about traveling I can't I don't, I'm not good at conversation black women have to learn how to have a decent in intellectual conversation besides something besides TV Read a book, read the, the uh, travel section of the newspaper, if you read the newspaper, or websites that highlight different parts of the world. Read about the arts, music, besides hip hop and rap. There's nothing wrong with that because we, as black people, we started those genres. So I'm absolutely not talking bad about our own. What I'm saying is broaden your horizon so that you bring more to the table. You're, you're more than just a one dimension of woman. You have more to bring to the table than just loving hip hop and frying chicken. I mean, I'm not down in that, but that's predominantly what brothers are saying. They see a lot. They see a headstrong woman with career and degrees. And she's saying, ain't no man gonna tell me nothing. By the way, he does need to have this and he does need to have a house and all this money and he needs to have this and he needs to be over six feet tall. And then I look at her and I'm like, okay, you look good on paper, but then you're not submissive. You back talk, you have a bad attitude. You won't smile. You think all men are- Yeah, you Go ahead. <laughs> And you know, and then oh yeah, and let me add, you have a couple kids. So then you don't, you don't. And you don't break really, it now. You just don't even know. Okay. <laughs> you don't really be taking. I think sisters need to really. I, and I tell women on a daily basis, the ones that I coach, I tell them on a daily basis, the the women that get married the quickest are the ones living in reality. If you live in fantasy world, continue doing that. You live in Wakanda, wherever fantasy land you want to be in. That's fine. It will take you longer to get married because uh, men, men are logical. They approach marriage, the idea of marriage logically, which is why a lot of them are not getting married because they don't see the logic in it. They know when they get a divorce, the courts are going to eat them up, child support going to eat them up, and then probably lose their reputation because it's always the man's fault. 
<laughs> you know, that's the society's perception. And then, you know, um, logically, why should I marry her? I have 10 women calling me at one time. Two of them I have, like, three of them are okay. Uh, one of them's hideous, but she's a great person. Thanks. And then, you know, the other ones are like, one don't want to get married. She just want to have sex. And then the other two are just battling it out for me but i'm really not sold what's the what's the deal breaker i'm tell you know what's what's the 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 uh determining factor who i'm going to marry women do not understand that men make a decision on who to marry logically they approach marriage logically how does this logically pan out i i have feelings for her but that doesn't mean that we see men in relationships with women they care about all the time and never marry her so it's not is not men choose wives just because they love her. See, women think that men choose wives solely on the fact that he's in love. That's not happening. They can be with a woman for years and never marry her. We see this all the time. Men choose wives based on love and logic. And sometimes it's just logic, which is why some of them cheat, but that's deep game. Anyway, they choose women on logic uh, and doesn't make <coughs> logical sense. Is she a nurturer? Does, will she seem like a good mother to my children? How does she treat herself now? Is she a good steward of her own body? Um, how does she talk to me? Well, she talks to me crazy now. Then when we get married, it's not going to get any better, right? If she slept with me on the first date, then how many other dudes has she done that with? I don't want the neighborhood chew toy. I want a woman that I can actually walk around that's respectable, that everybody's like, wow, you bagged her? Wow, you're lucky. You're a lucky man. I don't want the the female that everybody done ran through. This is this is what men are thinking, but women don't get. And I'm telling women, the faster you grasp that, grasp that, and understand how men approach relationships in marriage, the quicker you'll get married. Stay in fantasy land, Wakanda, whatever. Then <laughs> just plan your girls' trip. Get get your cruises with your girls, cause that's what it's gonna be for you. Get you get you a couple cats, calicos, uh, and just chill, because that's what it's gonna be for you. Black men are the easiest men to get, and I don't mean it easy as in y'all not intelligent and smart and worth it, but y'all easy to get. Meaning, you guys is you guys is standards are a lot lax than other groups of men. Mm. Terrible. Anyway, I have, to, I have a question. Oh, okay. let, me, let me say this before I say, O'Shea came up here with eleven dollars, and he said he got that sesame seed anointing oil. For those of y'all that didn't know, you know what I'm saying. But he got the sesame seed anointing oil. Those that want O'Shea to lay hands, you know what I mean. You might be a woman. You got a fat ass. You got some nice thighs. You want O'Shea to rub the anointing oil on your body so he can anoint you and appoint you for this work, and so you can get this work, mess with O'Shea. Okay, um, hold on for a minute. Okay, I see Coco then came up in here. You know what I mean? Now, go ahead, Hillary, you wanted to ask something. Go ahead. I was going to ask Nicole um, why she thinks men or black men's um, standards are a whole lot more lax than other uh colors and races of people um black men are raised by black women so they're told that you do not challenge a black woman you don't challenge her when she's young you don't challenge her when she's uh your girlfriend or your wife you don't challenge her when she's older you don't challenge her if she's your mother you don't challenge her if she's a teacher you don't challenge black women period so that allows them that allows black women to pretty much have carte blanche to act however they want and not get challenged and not get told other groups of women they they have um they're told how far they can go and they know this they know this from a small child how far they can go with a man and keep him and this is why you don't see a lot of asians acting up in public you don't see white women uh the decent ones, upper middle class, middle class, upper middle class, acting certain ways in public. You don't see Latinas acting certain ways. You see Latinas wiped up with a bunch of babies by the time they 22, 23. They don't, they, sisters are the only ones that have carte blanche to act any kind of way. Another thing, brothers are conditioned to marry women or want, want or guilted into wanting women with children. They are the only men that are told, you don't have the right to have a legacy. You don't have the right to start fresh. You don't have the right to demand or command 
or tell them or or even vocalize the fact that you want a woman who comes <coughs> to you. Black men are the only ones told this. All right. Now we can argue all day that black men have challenges. We know that we've been talking about that for 50 years. But when you talk, when we shine the light on sisters and say, but y'all come into the relationship with kids. It's already hard out here financially. Now you telling him that a brother with no kids, I did a Facebook live about this very thing. You telling a brother with no children who works every day, he is not in and out of jail. <clears throat> he's not breaking laws. You telling him he's less of a man because he won't marry a single mother. Are you insane? That is not what you tell a good masculine man, a black man, that he's better or he's no good. It's one thing to down black women and just dog them on the internet. It's another thing to flip that, uh, it's another thing to tell black women that, uh, no, you can't say that. You can't do that. See, black women have carte blanche to dog men day in and day out. I see the memes on my face, on my timeline, going in and in and in on brothers. But the minute we say sisters have to be challenged on this, the sisters areas of opportunity is that, then all of a sudden everybody's ears perking up. What? What? You talking Nicole? about sisters? They're bashing. Nicole, I have a question for you. Because mm -hmm. um, I know you have very strong opinions about um, the way that a lot of Black women carry themselves that can be quite problematic uh, in terms uh, of them trying to find a mate. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think a lot of people feel that Black women might not be or um, exude femininity? Um, why do you think they're uh, having, or we are having the trouble, or, I, you know, I can't even include myself in that, honestly, but why do you think um, that's such an issue? That uh, actually never, and before I, I let you finish, I, I don't, some of these things, like I, I really, I can, I, I understand, but I don't understand how um, a woman could continue, and this is just my opinion, how a woman could continue to have issues with tapping into her feminine essence. Um, yes, you have children. Yes, you work. Yes, you do things that uh, might require or might, you know, typically be a man's task to do. But I don't understand how the femininity gets lost in translation with all of these duties. So um, um, from your experience, and also I think that um, like your, where your, your, currently located, um, like from what you've been exposed to, depending on, I guess, what you see every day and um, the population that surrounds you would also shape your perspective. So um, I know that's also a factor, but uh, why would you say that it's so difficult for black women to be so feminine, I guess? Well, I do travel outside of Atlanta and Hold I can Hold on, before she begins, Nicole, please make this short because I don't want to go to different planets. I want to stay on this topic and I want to open up the phone lines, you know what I mean? Because I already know that's going to reveal a lot of information. Y'all going to have different opinions, you know what I mean? And I already know her opinion ain't going to have dominion over what you think. Her opinion ain't going to have dominion over what you think. So, you know what I mean? Please, you know, uh, summarize that up, bless her a little bit, and let's get right back you know, to the topic, I don't want to go to 33rd Street. It's good that we had 99 trying to get to 100. You know what I mean? So go ahead and uh, bless her right quick. Well, just real quick, um, and I talk about this in my book, um, and I've been really attacking feminism lately, uh, but we may not, Black women may not identify ourselves as quote-unquote Black feminists, but we, um, we subscribe to their ideology, which is... Um, a, a lot of where the attitude comes from. We've had three, um, uh, almost three generations of black women raising black children without a man in the home. What happens when there's no balance is they see a woman doing it all. They see her primarily in masculine energy. And as a result, the girls pick up the same um, attitude. And it's a very harsh, it's a very hard exterior because when there's no 
man around, you're unprotected, which leaves you open to predators. Um, and a lot of our women have been touched inappropriately, molested. Uh, so that's part of the attitude. You know, let's not, you know, mull over that. So a lot of our sisters are walking around emotional wounds that just, just open, gashing wounds. And when they talk i hear it and i'm like please let me do one-on-one -on -one coaching so i can help you get through this you are not going to have anything healthy with a man with a with this wound and, and sisters they actually believe that they can have a relationship because they because tyler perry told them in their in his movies that a man like uh what's his name boris kojo is gonna come in your life tall handsome and he's going to solve all your problems because he's going to love you past your attitude he's going to love you past your three kids he's going to love you past your dad he's going to love you past your stretch marks and y'all going to live happily ever after because he's going to love you. all the he gonna love and all beyond your bullet wound he's going <laughs> to love you daddy he got uh you understand me different baby daddies he's going to love he's going to love all of this and, yeah. and, and men are not Men are not your therapist or your father. They're not even wired to do that. But sisters somehow believe that this man is going to step in and pick up where daddy left off or baby daddy left off or Tyrone from the sixth grade left off. It don't work that it does not work like that, ladies. Feminine women have to heal because we are the warmth of the world. That's the beauty of femininity is we give that off and that entices a masculine man to say, hey, she's different from all the 50 other bras I've been with. I want her. It's something about her that touches me in my heart. You can't touch a man in your heart in his heart if your heart is hard. It's not happening. It won't happen. You did. did you that, know what? Did that I give did. you a little bit, Hillary? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit, okay, okay. Well, look, we can we can do another video at another time, and I'll let y'all debate and, and <laughs> really, you know, take off the heels and go in. Okay, now, Paulina, what I did you say? And learn. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that that's another thing when you think about where for a woman, what she really wants from a man is she want him to listen. She want him to be sensitive to who she is as a black woman to be sensitive to, you know, her history, her family history, to right. be sensitive and really try to get to know what makes her tick, to not put her in a box and say, well, you should act like this person or you should act like that person, to say, let me get to know this woman, to not put her in the category as the ex, to not put her in the category as the ex-wife, to not put her in the category as his mother who used to do something to him that made him feel some type of way to really try to listen and understand that woman so that he can walk in wisdom and lead her properly. So. Hmm. Uh, Hillary, you looking like you want to say something before I open up these phone lines and allow people to call in. Did you want to say something, baby? Um, well, I do want to say that um, I enjoy listening and learning from all uh, different perspectives and outlooks. And um, I don't have any children. I've never been married. Um, I have had those opportunities. Um, I have had long-term relationships. And so when I listen to um, these lovely ladies share their experiences and their perspectives, or that's shaped their perspectives on certain um, certain topics. It just it helps me to, you know, um, apply it to something that might, you know, come up for me in one way or the other. Um, but I know that some of the the uh, concern not concerns, but some of the things that you, the, the, the uh, topics that you talked about, like femininity or expectations. Um, like unrealistic expectations that a woman might have for a man when she has uh, baggage or if she doesn't have a certain level of education, you know, what does she have to contribute? Those types of things, sometimes it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like there's, like some of this stuff is just, it's, in my opinion, it's just like the basics. Like you should already know to, to have, like you can't get something for nothing. So of course, you know, you have to come with something. You have to be willing to uh, contribute 
You know, you can't just have your hands open and just be willing to receive and give nothing in return. So a lot of that is just not elementary, but it's just very, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's some of the, you know, it's just some things that I thought that a lot of women would already know to have um, because beauty fades. Um, sometimes you get fat, you know, things change. So <laughs> at the end of it all, you know, you really have to have uh, some things like you really have to have something to offer um, beyond all that. So I don't know. I, it never, sometimes it blows my mind to know that it never really dawns on people to, to think about those things. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's, that's all sin. I want you guys to hit that like button. It's damn near 200 big head motherfuckers watching. Hit that like button right now. Hit the share button right now. Come out the corner, make a comment. You know what I mean? To that attractive woman that's in the comment section. You know what I mean? He that wants friends must show himself friendly. By all means, make yourself friendly. Compliments lead to development. Don't, uh, you know what I mean? Be shy. Give that lady a compliment. You know what I mean? Woman, you know what I mean? Whether you're handsome or whether you're big as hell, you might look like Biz Marquis. You might look like a bar with no MJG. But, you know what I'm saying? You need to go ahead and give a compliment as well. Make yourself at home, ladies and gentlemen. Helena, baby, go ahead and put that uh, 504 line in, baby. I'm ready for uh, the callers to call in before I allow the ladies to go back to blessing the world, you know, or the bed with their, uh, you know, with their beauty. And can I also say something, too, because I, I think it's important to really discuss finances. You mm -hmm. know, this is important to me. You know, I desire a man who can, you know, pay bills and close deals because that's what I'm bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that's hold, important. Hold on, right? I love that. Wait a minute, break that. Hold on, wait a minute. Let let Paulina get this in first before y'all call. <laughs> Say that again. I like that. And it rhymed too. Have a little, have a little I ring to it. Go ahead. I want and I need a man that she? can pay bills and close deals. Okay, <laughs> because that's what I'm bringing to the table, and that's what she? I need him to bring to the table. <laughs> and it's not about having all this these finances like I don't need to see you as a walking billboard of labels matter of fact I think it's so sexy and attractive that you just being so you know inconspicuous and you know I'm like you got a portfolio you know that's important uh, women want a man that really is building for the future not really just trying to spend everything so to me you know I need to know that you can pay bills and close deals you know we gonna make it happen Together. Right. Right. So let me let me ask you this, because you guys dealt with what you wanted mentally, you know, uh, behavior wise and everything like that. And, you know what you want them to create and everything like that. Uh, let me make this uh, video a little more interesting. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, Hillary, what do you want out of a man? I mean, as far as spiritually you know what I mean? And sexually, like, you know, does he have to have a doctrinal belief, you know, as far as the spiritual, you know, aspect or, you know, sexually, you know, what type of man, you know, what type of man do you, you know, you desire? Um, that's okay. So she want a man, she want a man to put his mouth on things and say, um, <laughs> Well, this is what I will say. Um, the more that I have, uh, the, the, as I have progressed in my own life and as I've learned and been able to educate myself on uh, religions, beliefs, spirituality as well, and just familiarizing myself with all of the th things um, that have indoctrinated the people that surround me, what I would like to have in a man is um, a strong sense of spirituality. Um, I would definitely want him to be grounded in that um, because I feel like that is the umbrella to which all other doctrines of belief fall under. Um, and when you get a certain level of understanding, I guess you would know, or that would it that would you know make the most sense. Um, so. That's something that um, 
that I would like for that man to have. And as far as, <laughs> uh, what did you ask? Want you a man, do you want a man to sit up there and tell you to toot that ass up? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of y'all well, you want a man to be romantic. You want him to bring you flowers. You want him to be on some John B. ass shit. You know what I mean? He got to say all of these profound ass words. But do you ever, you know what I mean? Just want a man to tell you to toot that ass up and get right to the point. Well, I mean, there's a time and a place where uh, all of that you know all of that absolutely just go ahead and just give me all that but uh you know you know days will vary where you know this might be you know what we're having for the day and then that might be what we're having for the next day you know it would vary so yes all of that uh you know just love and passion of course Ooh, that's important so you want love you want a man that's passionate loving and all of that stuff but then it's sometimes that you want him to just come right up in the kitchen or wherever you at in the house and just break your ass off. That's what you want. Why, sure, yeah. Break me off. <laughs> her shy ass. Why, sure. <laughs> she trying to sit up there and be kidding with you. Yeah, yeah. With her little petite pussy. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you, just a little, you just tell Hillary got a little dainty pussy. You know what I mean? One of them little petite pussies and shit smelling like Garden of Eden. She probably got a perfume. That's what the perfume called, Garden of Eden. But anyway, uh, Paulina, let me get to you. What type of man do you desire, you know, spiritually, you know what I mean, and sexually? Like, what does he, like, can he be, uh, mm -hmm. can he look like Dan from Roseanne? Uh, you know what I mean? And do he got to be a Denzel looking motherfucker? You know what I mean? Do like you a, uh, uh, the Malcolm X kind, or you know what I mean, or do you want your, you know, the shirt and tie brother, you know what I mean, or do you like somebody that's a thug, you know what I mean, he uh he a mechanic, he work on cars and shit, he built, you know what I mean, he got dirty jeans and shit, you know what I mean, but he take care of business though, he get the paper, and he know how to break you off, he probably can't spell his name on a smartphone, <laughs> but he got hustle about himself, and he know how to sit up there and cook and break you off. You know what, I mean? what type of man is you trying to have? <laughs> you know what? It's so funny because when I was younger, I'm like, he has to be a Christian. He has to be this. No, a lot of people profess to be Christians and they not living up to nothing in the Bible. They pick and choose what they want to abide by. So no, he needs to be spiritually grounded. He needs to have his own relationship with the creator, with God. He needs to um, have a vision for his life. Yes, he needs to, to you know, be able to make love to me like it's the end of the world every night. Period. Mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> every time, like, you know, if I come home from work, if, you know, like, we, we flying out meeting each other, you know, yes, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> but... <laughs> and then you said about looks. Okay, so I'm not focused on looks. I just can't be scared when I look at him. I'm uh, more focused on, you know, physique. Like as far as, like, I'm obsessed with teeth. You already know I'm obsessed with oral hygiene. You know, your breath needs to be fresh all the time. You know, you need to floss. You need to smell good. You know. Wait, hold on. What if you got a good <laughs> ass for real? And you know what I'm saying? He keeping you in nice heels. He paying bills and just bought an automobile. But the bro the brother's breath smell like he want to be alone. He has a spirit that is contrary, you know what I mean, to what you desire to smell in his mouth. The nigga breath smell like all type of demonic spirits at times. Like, <laughs> can you get through this catastrophe? Could you get through this abomination, you know, within the conversation that you have with this, uh, with this man? That's proceeding from it, cause he got he got one of them problems. He gave matter of fact, he might even tell you when he was a little boy. You know what I mean? Uh, the dog, the dog licked in his mouth, and his breath ain't been right ever since then. You know he got one of them diseases. And shit. He tried baking soda. He tried prayer. It mm -hmm. just, you know what I mean, it just you know they went off on. Could you fuck with him or not? I could after I take him to my dentist, and I'm gonna get them root scales. <laughs> He's going he gonna to get them root scales, all four quadrants. He's going to get all them teeth pulled. He's going to get veneers if he needs those. Um, I'm going to get them righteous. 
his gums gonna turn pink. You know, gums supposed to be pink, not crazy looking. I'm gonna oh. get him. He gonna be righteous. I'm going. That's. I'm not tripping. Like that's fixable. That's fixable. You know, there's a lot of things that's not fixable. I can't. You know. Okay, let me let me uh before I come with this next question, let me move uh to Nicole. You know, what type of man do you desire, you know, spiritually? You know, does he have to have a salvation from the divine? And, and does he have to have, you know, what I mean, a, a a beautiful blessing to bless you from behind? Like, you know, what type of man? And oh, if his feet stink, we can get them feet fixed too. <laughs> so you gonna have them with Jodeci boots on the whole time? Okay. So Nicole, what type of man you desire? Well, um, to be honest with you, I'm not even trying to be funny. I've taken a year off from dating and uh, mm -hmm. uh, relationships right now because I'm trying to build this movement, and so I'm so serious. I'm not even really di dipping and dabbing right now. I'm just just doing me and building my uh, movement, but. Rest assured, you know, my name is Nicole Michelle. Once I snatch his name on the back of mine, you know he's all that. He will be all that. Mm -hmm. Because that's why I purposely left my last name off to show the world when I when I get married this time, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's forever and he is all that. God really did stop the show with it, as O'Shea would say. He really did stop the show with this brother. Trust and believe. Mm -hmm. so, Okay, well, let me ask something uh, that, you know, that you said things that can't be fixed. Uh, I mean, things that can't be fixed and things that can't be fixed. So what I want to ask y'all is, you know what I mean? Uh, what if, what if uh, Paulina, what if he do got stanky ass feet? What if he do, you know what I mean, every time he take off his shoes and socks and shit, you know what I mean, he be taking you through, you know what I mean, changes and shit. And... Not only do he got stanky ass feet, he like to put his feet up and rub them together and click his nails and all types of shit. <laughs> yes, baby, go get me some lemonade. You know what I mean? Can you deal with him or not, baby? Get, but let me tell y'all what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some talc powder. I'm going to get some bleach. I'm going to get some compression socks. I'm going to make oh. that mixture. And you're going to be having them compression socks on till he kill that fungus. And yeah. then I'm going to take him to a podiatrist to get them t toenails cleaned out because he got fungus growing. It's a reason why his feet stinking. It's a, it's a sickness that can be fixed. Mm. <laughs> you well, know well, what? No, that's Come not on. right. That's not right. Um, you can't you can't go around like that. Like if your feet just stink and you're just unkept, and I can't. I can't clean you up like I can't do that. Like you should already come correct. Like you already know. Like that's insulting to me. How why would you do I, excuse me? Like I know. Like so so I that don't mean she be decent and in order. So a nigga can't sit up there and put a size 13, 14, and 15 size feet, you know, up on your legs and say, babe. You know what I mean? Go ahead, you know what I mean? Rub my feet, girl. I had a rough day. You know what I mean? Go ahead and talk to me. You know what I mean? And he just, he just stinking like a motherfucker. He got them Gensu knives and shit. You know what I mean? Like, can you, you know what I mean? Could you rub through the pain? I mean, after a long day, you know, he's a hardworking man. His feet might have worked up a sweat and then, you know, they stink or whatever. But, you know, if he's just, waking up and they smell like like death like that's unacceptable so that is when i would not i can't i can't partake in that like i can't do it and it's insulting to me to even try to have me participate in something like that but <laughs> well, okay see, what, what, hillary, hillary i gotta say this i've actually had that issue and it's actually very erotic you know you get the i give my man pedicures like you know, when I'm in a relationship, it's no issue for me to give my man a pedicure. That's like sensual and erotic. You know, you do his feet, his mind blown. I so. I mean, you know, I, I could see that. You know, I, I've I've used some some tools in a nail kit before. You know, I don't see anything wrong with that. But if you're just coming, 
like where you're just very lax in your self care. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. That's just not right. That's very inconsiderate. Of, of damn, that nigga got some inconsiderate ass feet. God damn, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> oh, that's shit. not that's not feet. God damn, <laughs> niggas be pulling out them inconsiderates on y'all. Um, so, so let me let me ask let me ask uh, Nicole. Nicole, can you demand that you gonna be with in the future? Because I know you said he got to be all of this. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he gonna have, you know, this, he just gonna be designed by the divine and everything like that. But what about if the man that was designed by the divine, you know, what if he, uh, what if he got stacky ass feet, uh, uh, and he got, and he got a little dick, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his dick is, is shorter than, you know what I mean? Uh, a young person's future sometime on the south side of Chicago. Uh, and you know what I'm saying? Like, how how do you cope with this? How do you deal with these inconsiderate ass feet and this inconsiderate ass dick? How do you how do you press towards the mark for the prize of high calling? <laughs> no, Lord. Um. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I tell women with that I coach that. Everybody has some flaws. Everybody has some things about them that we wish would be different. And you have to outweigh, you have to look, does his goods outweigh his bads? Like if he's, you know, his feet or just not his best attribute, but he's loyal and he's protective and he looks good, except when he takes off his shoes, then sometimes you just got to be like, okay, I'm going to have to help him out, but that's not a deal breaker. And I think a lot of times with sisters, we uh, be like, oh, that's a deal breaker. Throw him, throw him back, toss him back. And then we forget, like, we have some things about us that we need to fix too. So not to turn this on women, but, you know, if, um, you know, once I present this man to the public as me, um, as being my husband and my leader, um, number one, he's going to be a builder. That's, that's off tops. Cause I'm building, I'm actually creating something for women. His and feet uh, like, his feet look like he built, but go ahead. <clears throat> you know what? I, I haven't had that problem. You haven't had, I, but I, what, I, if, I, what if God I, called you to be with somebody who got a dynamic ministry? He can preach, he can teach. He can, he can sing, but he's short. He, he's short. He uh, got this Danny DeVito thing going on, and uh, his feet his feet is the best definition of stank. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, he be uh, doing, the, as the brother said, he be doing a stanky leg in the spirit around the house. You know what I mean? With you know what? My, my, ex, uh, my ex-husband, um, and he's a great guy, so I'm not dissing him. Um, at all. He was an excellent provider and all those things that I listed before. Um, but he did have a challenge with his feet. Uh, God bless his soul. But when we were married, I made, I made you know, I, he was a Marine. He was a, he was a former Marine. And you know, when they wear those boots, it does a number on your feet. And I was like, right. You, okay, we're going to do something about that. And he was like, I know, I know, I know. I got boot feet. I know. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to do it. Um, and he he knew my reaction was just like, for real? We That's how you doing it? Like, But eventually I learned to <laughs> look past that because he took showers. He took care of himself. It was just his feet just had an ugly look. And I was like, as long as you're not wearing sandals, <laughs> we straight. Like, you know, he's over six feet tall. He's this big, massive, muscle-bound guy. And, you know, he didn't have on... I knew his feet was messed up. Everybody else didn't know. So I didn't care. He looked good in his clothes. He, You know, he, we had a nice little family look. So, you know, ladies, sometimes you just have to, like... Like, like uh, Paulina said, look, I want the guy. This is just one thing I got to deal with. Let me just do what I can. And you can make it fun. You know, um, mm, you know, y'all have, sitting up here making stank ass feet fun. Y'all some smart <laughs> ass women. I'm <laughs> with y'all. Y'all are smart. I mean, but you know, we have 
as as a group of women, we've lost our art of bringing out the best in our men. We are so quick to toss each other mm-hmm. on to the next one, on to the next one. Right. Instead of saying, you know what, this person really has a lot of good qualities. Maybe if I help him, um, it, if he's showing interest in you, you know, and if I help him, I can help him do this. That's a, a lot of times we lose our men, brothers, um, to other groups of women because they take the time. They're not fo- highly <laughs> focused on my new details like that. They're focused on the grand scheme of things, his integrity, his character. Can his I interject? To- yes, things please. Like that. I'm sorry. I, I, cause you know, I think some people, um, like don't, I hope no one's getting, getting it confused with say, for example, just something like feet, ugly feet versus stinky feet. (laughs) Ugly feet are fine because everyone can't have nice feet. You know, they can be gang banging, but I mean, if they smell, your hygiene is of the utmost importance. Like, I can't stress that enough. So if your feet stink, you might have some type of fungi going on. So then what? Do your balls stink? Did you wipe the butt? You know, it just goes back and is your neck black? Like, do your ears, do you have black heads? Like, you know, it just makes me think about all these other types of things. So I can have empathy for ugly feet, but if you smell, that's different. So, uh, That's so, can deal, so can you deal with a man with <laughs> stank, stanky balls? No. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> what women really want? Women really want a man who What if hold on, hold on. Balls. What if he a real what if he a real what is he uh as people call a so called real nigga? He a real nigga, no, but he just no. got bad hygiene. You know, Absolutely he a real nigga. He a real nigga just keeping I mean, it real. Hygiene is something like you're an adult. You Absolutely. have to learn how to wash yourself. This is this is basic. Now there are disorders that cause your feet to sting. I don't want us to get caught up on feet, but there are disorders that can actually make your feet stink. So yeah, I'm I'm with Hillary on that. You have to dissect and find out why you constantly have stinky feet what's going on with your shoes you know do you need some doctor shows like what's going on you need some powder go bond like what's going on with you get to the bottom of it Where? you know Put it in it's- right 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 okay well let, let me ask you this what about that sexual part what if the brother is coming up shout and you know what i'm saying he ain't he just saying, you know, uh, pleasing. Hey, man, his, his ministry is not up to par. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he, he's not uh, he's not blessed in the city. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, his, his, his territory is not enlarged. Hey, man. Uh, oh, my you know, God. He, touch somebody and say desolate. You know what I mean? He just, uh, he's bankrupt in the spirit. Uh, so, Peace you know, God. if he's not... If he's quenching the spirit in the bedroom, you know what I mean. Can you <laughs> can you sit up there and deal, you know what I mean, with this man? Like he he's he's anointed, you know what I mean. He's educated. He's a, a very uh, classy man. He's a nice dresser, you know. Um, he he he. Uh, what should I? Say? What else could I give this dude? Um, he got a career. That makes over a hundred thousand, even after taxes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he, he he got some things going on. He's a kind-hearted guy. You know what I mean? The whole church love him. You know what I mean? He, he's loved by the community. But when it comes to the bedroom, God just did not bless this man. You know what I mean? It's just not uh, it, it, this, you know, his the sex ain't even as long as somebody saying Jesus well. You know what I mean? Oh. You know, uh, can you deal with this? Yeah, like Jay said, he makes you laugh. He's funny. You know, even though he make you laugh in the bedroom too when he took that out, but he makes you laugh. You know what I mean? Can you deal with his uh, his short blessings, his shortcomings in life? You know what I mean? And not even just shortcomings, because some people got a uh, certain type of comments, but they just don't know what they're doing, or he might have something wrong with his blood. You know what I mean? Uh, the man don't get on hard when he want to get on hard. 
you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you be wanting to uh, get get at them, and uh, you know the blood of Jesus just don't be moving at times. The spirit don't be moving. You know what I mean? When he wanted to move, you know what I mean? Uh, it just it's just dead up in there. And I ain't gonna lie to you. Like sometime uh, when he he doing this thing, you probably thinking about what you did at your job or something. You ain't even thinking about what's going on. He come and he left, and, and you know. <laughs> Your mind be somewhere else. Can you deal with this? I'm talking to all three of y'all. <laughs> Somebody else go first. So I'll go last. <laughs> Mine said he got to have a mean tongue tongue game. What if his tongue game ain't up to par? And, you know what I mean, the dick ain't up to par. He just, the brother just getting Fs all on his report card when it comes to the sex thing, okay? He is not putting it down and bring it back around. He just don't have it, man. Not blessed. I just wanna, let me say something. I want to shout out Clyde Hazlett. He said, keep him and get a side nigga. I know, laugh out loud. <laughs> and then Kevin Samuels. Clyde <laughs> trying to get a side nigga. Wait, Kevin uh. Samuels said, women will cheat on him or make his life a passive aggressive hell. Okay, I just needed to say that. As soon as they get into an argument, that's the first thing she goes sit up there and tell that man. She about to let him go. <laughs> like, man. Why are you messing? Go, go. He gonna be like, "Why are you watching that pimp? Why are you watching his videos? Why are you talking to a pimp on the phone, woman? What's wrong with you?" And she say, "You little dick ass nigga, you better not raise your voice in my house again." <laughs> You know what I mean? You got the spirit of humility in your pants. Nigga, you better be the fuck quiet talking to me, raising your voice. Nigga, you ain't even got the type of dick to be just talking to a woman any kind of way. Sit your motherfucking ass down and humble yourself. So, you know what I mean? He gonna have to deal with a lot of shit. So I'm asking y'all, how would you conduct yourself in this type of situation? He's, he's a nice man. He's generous. He got a good personality. You know what I mean? He's very intelligent, but he just not blessed in that area, man. Just ain't got it. You know what? I think uh, um, some some men like that. They already know they don't have something, a certain something, so they don't come directly on trying to um, be more to you than they know that they can be. So they already know who they are, and what they have, and what they don't. So um, they they stay in their lane for the most part. Um, so the rest of all that really actually a lot of women don't even have to worry about because they know that a lot of them know that they play a certain position and they're okay with that <laughs> because they know that that's where, what it is in this life. You know, they're making the most of it. You know, they're you know, they're businessmen and making the most of it. Hey, uh, they're making the most of it. He knows he's fucked up. God damn. Funny. He's just doing, he's just, he, he already knows. So there's really nothing that you could say to him that would shock him or do. Um, he's just happy for the most part, you know, in some, you know, if it's just in an, an extreme case anyway. Um, I would say he's just happy to be entertained, you know, um, and uh, the expectation on their part is very low. So this nigga class yeah. stupid. If I had a little dick, I would still curse your ass out. Clyde <laughs> 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 has been clowning all night. Yeah, he has. He really has been. He really night. has been cutting up. He's been cutting. No up. chill. No chill. Yeah, he been, he been acting the fool up in here. That's hilarious. Okay, um, well let me let me hurry up and open up the fall line. Selena, go ahead and hit that five hundred four, and I'm gonna allow you guys to just call in. And uh, I know a lot of the fellas want to speak. You didn't you didn't let us finish answering. See? What? I do got, but yeah, but I, I got this time. I didn't answer. I didn't answer. Go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Right go ahead and hurry up. Get in. Go ahead, Paulina. I, I gotta get that time I in. I know he go like, Eastern time, so. Go ahead. go ahead. I can't deal with a man like that. I'm just saying. Okay. You could? No, I couldn't. You couldn't deal with his shortcomings. I couldn't. 
I'm not that woman. I'm, I'm not that woman. That's important. That's an important area for me. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I can't. Okay. That's a that's a deal breaker for me. Agreed. That is Man, important. It's- uh, it's a motherfucker right now just sitting down just crying like, God damn, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a good man. You know what I mean? I got good credit. I just got I a job. I got two jobs. I need that connection. Man, I know niggas sitting over there like, damn, man. I got two jobs. I got my own place. I don't live with my mama. I've never been arrested before. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got it going on in so many areas, man. What's happening? And uh, Nicole, Nicole, what you got to say? Can you deal with it or no deal? Uh, y'all cracking me up, y'all. I'm, I'm so tired of delirious. Y'all cracking me up. Um, I'm going to say I'm red pill. I'm a red pill female. So with that information, one can con- one can deduce that if <clears throat> typically um, statistics say the average size of a male penis is about six inches, roughly. So if a man is simping a lot and going above and beyond, doing some beta males, simping, whatever you like, Typically, those guys that are, have the shortcomings, they've come short of the glory, as you say. Oh. Simple. <laughs> coming, short of the, coming short of the glory over there, coming short of the glory. Damn. <laughs> typically, they're simping. Typically, they're simping to overcompensate. Tempi- typically. Typically. I'm yeah. just saying, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say something's up. Why is he simping so much? And I'm going to throw him to the side simply because he's simping too much. So I'm not going to have that problem. And I haven't had that problem. Um, so that's that's what I go by is I go by his behavior is is fishy is suspect. Something's wrong. He's con- he's overcompensating for something. And usually it's that or something larger. Uh, <laughs> more important <laughs> so I've never had that that problem but you know I'll, let me throw this in real quick this might spark up some phone calls for you P uh, um, if the average penis size for a man is about 6 inches um, and then women are constantly saying it's gotta be huge then one can say that a lot of women have had so many sexual partners that they're stretched out and there's no more tightness and in, in traction. That so ain't my problem. Have, they're huge penises. Uh, and I'm telling you, this is what the doctors are saying. Mm-hmm. The doctors are saying that they have these bad What y'all penises. say? The doctors don't know what the fuck they're talking like, about. Not mine. Not mine. Because <laughs> I don't like but, you. But, but we can't answer that question. Only men that are right. experiencing us can answer that yes. question. For real, for real. That's and true. are they, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes when women are saying, and none of you, neither one of you said it had to be big. You just said you couldn't deal with it. Right. Small. right. I'm talking about Thank women. I'm talking, I'm talking about women that are overly vocal about what size it got to be. Oh, no. Typically are the ones that, and I just did a post about this and folks went crazy. Uh, I said, if you if you can always tell a woman with a lot of experience or just a downright hoe, because she's always talking about how big it gotta be. It gotta be big. I mean, dude. Not a lot of women. They, they and, and let me tell the young niggas out there, they be lying. They be lying. They be lying. They be lying. Most of them be lying because they trying to sound like they sexually advanced to their friends, man. Oh, scared pussy ass. She just sitting up there talking <laughs> crazy, man. And then when she finally sit up there and get with a real nigga, a nigga from the street, she gonna sit up there, you understand me, and, and pull all type of moves on why she don't want the big dick. Them be the main ones talking all of that shit about how she experienced and I, I didn't had eleven before, I didn't had thirteen. The bitch lying, she ain't had none of that. She lying, a lot of be lying. So but you that's know, other track. don't be buying into that. You know what Man. I mean? Don't be bad in that. Women be sick. All of them be talking about, oh, they want a big Stanley Cup Super Bowl dick. The bitch scared of that. As soon as she get blessed with a nigga that's coming through with that sword, the bitch out of the bitch in her come all out. You know what I mean? Because any bitch that try to maintain her walls, especially, you know what I mean? If she knows she ain't even about to be with this nigga forever, 
You know what I mean? She ain't even trying to mess up her walls of Jericho. You know what I mean? By allowing this nigga to come up in there and just do his thing like that. Fact. Real talk. Walls of Jericho. So you, out, so you put out a leg on that bitch. She about to sit up there and say, man, come up with all type of manipulation tactics to not fuck. I'm telling you. The best way is to sit up there, you understand me? If you know you blessed, if you over blessed, is to sit up there, man, turn that light off, uh, mac to that bitch, get up in her motherfucking ear, make sure the pussy is wet, put some of it in, and then sit up there, you understand me, and get my wind like, yeah, real nigga up in here, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But if you know that you overly blessed, if you want them uh, uh, southern bootleg, Jodeci boots carrying motherfuckers, you understand me? Just about to take a, a motherfucker environment out on the bitch. Hey, man, you're gonna have to kick out the games. If you got facilities and environments and shit up here, shit, you're gonna have to kick some games. Because a lot of them be lying, talking about they want a big ass dick. And she lying, bro. She lying. That bitch want a Ralph Transvan, a Ralph Transvan man of sensitivity. You know what I mean? She's not looking for no big dick ass nigga. Don't. Don't don't let her fool you. But go ahead. What was you gonna say, Nicole? <laughs> no, no, that that pretty much summed it up. <laughs> Nobody's calling in. Was they friends? No, no, no. They was. They were just waiting on. Uh, they're calling in. No, yeah. they. Go ahead. I'm gonna open up the phone lines. Y'all can call in right now. Alina, put that five or four line in. Somebody said your dick ain't got to be huge. You guys got to have a proper stroke game. Uh, I don't know. Women might disagree with that because if you sitting over there coming in talking about some you two and a half inches by the grace of God, talking about you got a cold stroke, stroke game. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hold on. Hello? What's going on with it? You got to You got to Hold on, hold on. You got to speak up, bro. You got, because you kind of low right now. Y'all hit that like button right now. Got that Obama phone. Make sure you hit that. <laughs> make sure you hit that <laughs> like right there. Hit the like button right now. Hit the like button right now. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. And definitely hit that like button right now. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Hello? <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, where'd you go? He's he been abducted. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, man, I got a question for you later, bro. Go ahead, talk to him. Okay, you know, I ain't no people in that bed. We can't hear you, baby. We can't hear you. He, yeah, he dropped the call. Hello? They they say he's calling for maximum security lockdown. Stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I didn't read it. Hello. <laughs> Tony Davis says, stay on topic. No long stories. Thank you, Tony. <sighs> it's that Ob it's that Obama phone. Yeah, he is. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. What's going on with it, bro? Hey, Bree. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Bree said that y'all don't even want none of that stuff that y'all talking about. Y'all trying to make it pretty. That y'all want long, hard day. None of, none of the education matter. None of that stuff matter. He's saying that a man going to be able to get, he going to be able to have his way with just long, hard dick. He ain't got to have no education. He can be over at his, he can be over there at his mama house. He can have bad, bad credit. You know what I mean? She said, hmm. What <laughs> Bree, who is you? Bree, who is you talking? Who is you talking about? That scared. Tyler Perry, you know, that Tyler Perry, and fascinated with Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry's been in this. Don't 
Anytime a man leaves out with what I need, you need a hard blah blah. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Bree. Let me, let me hear what Nicole said. What you say, Nicole? I mean, no disrespect to the caller, but this is a word of advice to the brothers. Anytime, uh, when you encounter a feminine woman, she can automatically put you in several categories one being when you lead off with i know what you need in a bedroom and you go to listen off all the things that you can pleasure her uh a feminine woman is going to do put you in several categories broke uh mama's boy beta male all of which will lead you nowhere with her quickly like that's you know, in this particular conversation, it's appropriate because we that's what we were talking about the last thing. So I'm not talking about the caller, but just so men know, because a lot of dudes will be all up in the DMs and the IMs. That's why I hate to even pull mine up because I'm like, dude, do you see what I post? Do I actually look like I'm looking for dick pics? Come on. Like, but they, they think you want it. <laughs> they do this like women, like, dude, I don't even know you from a can of paint, but I know what your penis looks like. Like, come on, dude. It's that's not attractive. I hope the thirst, like, I hope guys really get that. That you know, I hope sisters know that <clears throat> that's not a quality man that is doing all that. Well, you know what? I want to. I want to weigh in here. You know that is important to me. That is <laughs> definitely important to me. But hold on, hold on, hold on, Hillary. What's important okay. to you? Um, you uh, know, uh, those extracurricular activities. No, no, no. Find that. Don't try to skate around this shit. You know what I mean? Come right in front. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, stop playing. You know what I mean? Come on, come on and say it. What, what is important? The quality of the physical intimacy is important to me. So in other <laughs> words, in simplicity, you, you want what Bree just said. You want long, hard dick. Okay, that that's important to me. But if that's all that you're like, like uh, Nicole also j just mentioned, I mean, I hope that no man would lead. Like, if you lead with that, like that's again, like uh, this is that's just uh, it's basic. Again, like you're not leading with that, right? Like, there's like five other men that say the same thing, but they have right. the same thing to offer. There's like big dicks every other. Like Three we, people, it's, a clear like, you know? it's a clear indicator he's not a builder because builders don't go around bragging about their pants because they have other things they've accomplished in life besides what's in their pants. See, so when you leave <laughs> out with that, when you leave out with that, we're like, oh, he must be broke because that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Bree, dumb as hell. Bree gonna say even if he got all of that, he still wanted to give you some hard dick. <laughs> okay, but well, we already know. But okay, but as women, we already know you're only, you're talking to us because you're attractive. So you don't need it's like overkill. You don't need to go above and beyond. You need this long hard dick. I know what I need, and I know that you're talking to me because you think you can give it to me. But do you have to state the obvious? That's like women on Instagram. They're already beautiful, and then they're half naked. It's overkill. You know what I mean? But but, but you know what? Broke niggas with good dick have no problems getting women. So let me hush. What do I know? <laughs> That's fact. Yeah. <laughs> We let, me, we let me get to the next caller. I appreciate you calling in, bro. Next caller. I'm mean, going to switch. Look. Tony said, Hillary, Tony said he wants your mind. You know what I'm saying? My, my, nigga, my nigga Tony Davis said he wants your mind, baby. I'm blushing with my black ass. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What's happening? 
told him keep it myself, baby. My bad. My car dropped really bro, when I'm back though. Okay. He said, how y'all doing, ladies? Hey, we were ready for you to call back in. Hello. Yeah, 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 already. I'm back in. Say. I like her voice. Huh? I said, she I said like she your like, voice. She said she like your voice. She think your voice is cute. Thank you, thank you. Not cute, <laughs> but. Oh, I ain't no beat. I'm a fan of the game. Uh, I ain't no trick either. Look, look, this is my philosophy. And this sticking on top, you just take me out real quick. Uh, it's along the lines of a skewed type of scene. And I, and I basically want to ask the ladies, what are y'all thoughts on religion? Religion? No, polygamy. I'm sorry, y'all missing that. Not polygamy, but polygamy. Well, for who? Black, for who? Black people? Well, I want I want to talk about about polygamy. It's it's funny, you know, when I first, you know, heard of the concept and heard about, you know, all these different, you know, basically our foundation and why families were polygamous and different things like that. And I, you know, I was so dead set against it. And I said, you know what? I don't believe in this mess. This is somebody who wants to have their cake and eat it too. But then I thought about my life and I said, I've been in polygamous relationships my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Real talk. Oh, I said, Wait a minute. I can't be against something I've been practicing in my whole life and didn't know it. I, you know, I wasn't brought in on it. You know, I wasn't. So, um, <laughs> I really, you know, I think in relationships, period. And, you know, we've been talking about this this whole live about, you know, what we believe men, um, women really want for men. But really, it just depends on what works best for the individuals. Those most mm -hmm. successful relationships I've seen, they really have come to terms and come to um, each other and said what works well for us. You know, I've seen couples practicing polygamous relationships. It wasn't... <coughs> an open situation but that's what worked well for them you know mm -hmm. so really i just, i really i'm not i'm indifferent it just depends on what the individual um what the two people want to agree to that's my thought anybody else want to say something um well, I would actually like to say what I've observed with those types of relationships, which is why I'm not opposed to it. Um, but I've seen people come together and build and amass so much um, because everyone was contributing. And um, there was just a, um, there was an understanding and everyone had that everyone was rational. Everyone was reasonable and everyone saw the bigger picture and everyone was benefiting from all the contributions. So no one felt slighted and it just made sense for everyone. Um, there were children, the children learned together, um, the wives conversed, you know, they got along and the man, um, you know, he facilitated all of that. Like he made sure that he uh, dispersed his time evenly amongst the people, the, the ladies and the children. Um, so really, you know, he, uh, sp he spearheaded it, of course, and he made sure that, um, because with women, as Sin says, you know, we're, uh, we lead with emotion. And, you know, I guess that's true in most cases. Um, so if you're a man knowing that, you know, and you're trying to have or lead a, po a polygamous life, you really have to be mindful and is extremely cognizant of that when you're dealing with multiple personalities and all these different women, all these emotions, um, jealousy, uh, she want to fag off, <laughs> whatever he said. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see you. Know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Get Get I said, I'm Get yeah. So, right. But he just really has to, uh, like, keep that all in check it's 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 a lot you know um but if a man is built for that because every man isn't and if he is clear with what he's doing with each woman and she you know um it's a good thing that he's doing and they want to get get with the program and get on the bus then yeah you know 
all for it. But again, um, what Helena, um, not Helena, <laughs> Paulina said, it's it's just about you know each each person's you know their individual preference. So yeah. Appreciate you for calling in. I'm gonna move on to the next call. Well, right now, bro, I'm trying to move within the time frame, man. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you, bro. I, you know, I fucks with you, but I'm trying to I'm working on everybody's schedule, man. Thank you, bro. Next caller. All right. Stay blessed, bro. Listen, when y'all call in, don't stop giving eulogies. Just Come right in, tell, you know what I mean, what's going on and everything like that. But, you know, you ain't got to do all of that. you like, stop telling me, you know, my little toe was hurt. And see, okay, it all started. You know, I was having pains. It kind of started like six years ago. You know what I mean? Uh, the shoes were small. You know what I mean? Because I, I wear 13. But it was like 11 and a half and shit. And I had to wait, wait years. Man, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You know what I mean? Ask the ladies what you need to ask and get the fuck on. I fuck Pete, with y'all though. Pete, let me add something real quick. First of all, black people as a group of people don't even understand the basics of marriage now. Now you're talking about polygamy? Okay, first of all, can you handle not handle, but can you manage a relationship with one woman? Now you want to add two and three and four wives and then children can you financially handle one now no so and then the it, it sounds good in theory to a lot of men like having a whole lot of women like i don't want to sleep with her tonight i don't want to sleep with her and i you know that sounds good in theory but when it's really acted out it's just a bunch of bumbleness and jumbleness don't let these whole tips make you think that that's <laughs> going to <laughs> oh, bless me, bro. what do you the know about the whole tips uh, change our definition of marriage. Let's get the, the real <laughs> definition of marriage down first. Then we can talk about polygamy. The other groups that practice polygamy, like the Mormons and things like that, they already had that foundation. They were br brought up in that foundation. So that's that they grew up. They have generations of being taught that. Our people are all over the place. They're single mothers. Some of them are married. Some of them, we, we're all over the place. And now you want to push polygamy? Now, nah, let's get one concept down. Um, and we don't even have a sense of community enough to support the families who do practice polygamy. Now, who who going to support that? They're not, they not welcome mm -hmm. in the church with that. And, and, and then do we have schools set up for these kids? Do we have a support system for those families? Or, or these are isolated incidences where there's a little Hotep man or Israel, uh, Israel uh, Hebrew Israelite with his couple of women and he hustling. Is it that type of situation where they just kind of isolated doing their thing? Or is this a community of people that actually believe in this? Okay, let me get to this call. Hold on. Hello? I, I had an answer for that. <laughs> Hello? 
Hello. Okay, Hello? You, okay, you took too long. Okay, what was your answer for that? You said you had an oh. answer for that. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say that um, it's not for everyone, but I've seen it work before. Like I've seen it. I've seen people where? have- um, Where, I'm curious, where did you see that? I, I, wanna, I wanna research them. You mean here in the, here in the states? I mean, they're not a billionaire or anything like that. But what they were able to do is they had multiple homes, um, they had multiple children, multiple wives. Everyone got along. Everyone was happy. Where is and it? They, where are they? Yeah, where is this? Is this in the states? Or in yeah, they're in, they're in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, okay. What? It's doable. It's doable. It's just the mindset that you have to have, and the people that you recruit to be able to get along, get on with the pro with the program you're trying to run. Is this a yeah. and, and I didn't mean to say if if the woman or if he could handle or whoever could handle whatever, but uh, you have to know full well what you're getting into, so uh, you're not shocked and surprised, you know that he has this or like none of that should be uh there, there, there are no secrets like this is what you signed up for this mm -hmm. is what it's gonna be we're gonna and we're gonna go from here and we're we're building so uh, i think it worked primarily because those people knew what the end goal was so every all of those little small uh drifts and and fights that they could have had they didn't matter because the end goal was so much bigger than the small things and misunderstandings that they could have had along the way. So is, yeah, I mean, it, it works uh, for is some this people. A community? Is this a community? No, it's not. It's not like some family. Amish community, like on on a homestead or anything like that. No, um, this was just a person and a black man actually that uh, had cooperative women, and uh, and they you know he they were cooperative <laughs> and they made it work and and by no means by me sharing the story am i um like promoting like the hotel you know you know uh lifestyle let me get all the bitches and then we just go like live at a an apartment and we just all you know we're all up in here you know or whatever they do you know i'm not promoting that um i really don't even know how that works actually and a lot of men don't even have the the and I won't say a lot of men, but some don't even have the know-how to execute uh, whatever their vision might be. And so I feel like that's up to the woman to decipher whether or not, uh, or discern whether or not he even has that potential to lead you again. And then that, you know, goes back to, uh, you know, femininity and submission and making sure that you're submitting to the right one. Because if he has all these grand plans, but he really doesn't know how to execute them, then uh, it, it's all a waste anyway. So. Okay, well, let me say this. <clears throat> and good point. Tony, they came up in here with the $5, man. Uh, blessings to you. Jay, turn that background down for me. Tony, they set up that came in with the five. What'd you say? I'm ready money on deck. Go on here, man. What's happening? Hey, man, I wanted to ask the lady something for, 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 uh, before I ask her. I just want to say, Nicole, I've been loving everything you've been saying tonight. <clears throat> Everything you've been saying just making me fall in love more and more with your mind. Like everything you just been saying been on point. Go ahead and back, nigga. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 What's going on, Paulina? You all right? Yes, baby. I'm doing well. Mm. Oh, that's what's up. You, you're looking well, too. Well, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, what I want to know is all three of y'all. Have y'all, can y'all really say that y'all really been with a winner in y'all life? A winner? The what? A winner. I have not been with the winner. You should have asked him to define the winner. Before you answer, let me teach you something. Before you, in a, in a debate or a conversation, when somebody asks you a question, so you can sit up there and expound and say something profound, Ask them to define what the hell they saying. He just asks you, have you ever been with a winner? Ask him, what's his definition of a winner? Because his definition of a winner might not be equivalent to what Webster's Collegiate Dictionary is talking about. So find out what Jay Big Head ass is talking about and say, Jay, define what a winner is. Go ahead and define what a winner is to me anyways. Uh, a winner to me is a man that 
that had a plan. He let you know what the plan was. He executed it. And, and, and you know, he's the head of the house just by financially and by the moves that he's making. And, you know, he's just a man to follow. Uh oh. Did y'all hear that? Yes, I heard it very clearly. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. I'll let someone else answer that first. Okay, go okay, cool. Um. Yes, I was married. My ex-husband was a winner. He still is. Um. He started at the bottom of his company when we got married. And um, I stayed at home and had babies while he went to college and worked. Now he got his degree okay. and he Moved up into his company, making six figures now. So he's always been a winner. But I recognize that in him from the get-go. So, you know, God is just blessing him now. And I'm surrounded by winners. I'm surrounded by black men who are winners. So that's I attract <clears throat> So, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, uh, how did that end? A divorce? Yeah. Hello? Did he Hello? Yeah, he's saying, how did it end, baby? Oh, divorce. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying, why did you get a divorce? Yeah, you that's what I'm going to say. Oh, y'all want the details of my divorce. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say. He took, he took off his shoes, and she got tired of dealing, <laughs> he got tired of dealing with her house smelling like Doritos every day. <laughs> um. Well, I talk about that in my Facebook lives and I'm transparent about that to help the younger women kind of avoid the mistakes I made. And he's not here to defend himself and he is a great guy. So I'm not going to talk bad about my baby daddy, my ex-husband. He's a good dude. I will say my part, my part was that um, um, I believe that I was missing out on something in life. And I thought that's being a by being a stay-at-home mom and focusing on just him and the kids, I was missing out. So I started listening to my single girlfriends and feminists and and, thing, and started subscribing to the feminist ideals. And it would kind of like was the beginning of the demise of my marriage. He did his part, but I'm just talking about what I did. Um, and I, I take ownership of that. And so that's why I'm so very fervent and passionate about my movement to, uh, educate the younger women so they don't make the same mistakes and to value uh, being wives and mothers and being feminine again. Mm. Love that. Okay. So, uh, Alina. Oh, I, I said I, my, my answer doesn't change since your definition. No, I haven't been with the winner. I would, I... <laughs> See, I feel like if a woman that hasn't been with a winner in her early life, like she's going to be down there forced to become one herself. Facts. 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 I agree. I agree with that statement. I do too. I would really agree with that statement. Say what now? I said I totally agree with that statement. Okay, okay. Hillary, did you have an answer for that? If you did, um, yes. Answer. Yes, I, I do have an answer. Um, yes, I've been with um, what I know to be potential winners because I, too, am a winner. Um, and so what I needed from these people, and I'll, already off top, so what I needed from these people, I don't come with any baggage. Uh, I do have education. And, um, you know, I have a certain... Uh, the standards that I have, I also am. And so I felt that uh, from these quote unquote winners, I needed a little something to know that whatever direction that we would be headed in um, was something that uh, was a for sure thing um, because no one wants to waste time. No one wants to waste resources. No one wants to, no one wants to waste anything. So to try to make sure uh, that I was as efficient as possible, you know, I would try to, you know, um, just be reassured in some way. And um, a lot of these uh, winners, I guess if, if that's what you would call them, because they did meet uh, the stipulations that you enumerated to be winners or to be considered winners, um, you know, they weren't willing to do that. So I don't 
I would call them winners, but they weren't really willing to um, go to that next or give me what I felt that I needed to be reassured to get on board with everything else and just go full throttle from there. So, so they didn't yeah. security in their plans, is what you're saying. Right. And that's, it's just, I don't really feel that takes much, you know, especially if it's, if the, you know, it's the bigger picture. So, um, you know, if it's just a small sacrifice for the bigger picture, it shouldn't be that big an issue, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, was it the plan itself or the way that they, you know, conveyed the plan to you? Um, what was it the plan itself that, that they didn't want to... Um, well, no, it wasn't not lack of security in the plan. It was just, okay, um, I, I am also going to be contributing. So, uh, okay. we're going to be doing this together. You're not, this isn't just, you're not just going to be giving. I'm all, you're going, you're going to be receiving. So it's going to be two ways uh, with this. So it's reciprocation here. So it wasn't, it wasn't, um, that wasn't received. I don't know if I'm, hopefully I'm, I'm clear with that. Yeah, yeah, you crystal clear. I understand what you're saying. But I want to ask y'all, do y'all think that it's not enough for winners in a black community as men? I can say, I want to respond to that. I think there are a lot of winners in the black community. I just don't think that they have been um, exposed and encouraged to continue winning, meaning that there are a lot of us that have really come from adverse circumstances. We've overcome a lot of obstacles. And, you know, those who know me know my life mantra is achieve against all odds. But um, we're not, we don't share our story. We don't, we try to wear our story, right? We don't share the steps we took to overcome, you know, my family is very diverse. I have family members that serve an extensive amount of time, 15 years, you know, did some things that was, you know, reckless, but they came out and said, you know, I'm going to fight, you know, I'm a felon, but I'm going to fight for whatever I can, you know, got educated, got, you know, uh, got a successful career and they still ashamed to share their story because they're in an environment where they don't want everybody to know what their past is. And I just think, I think that it's a lot of winners in the black community. Um, it's just, they are afraid and, and everybody has to understand this when it comes to life and defining success, you guys have to realize that you have to define success for yourself. It's not what another person deems as successful for you. And because we sometimes are looking at um, the gauge of someone else's life, we don't feel like we are a winner. We don't when it's like, you know, where you came from, you batting a thousand because you not, you know, living the same life that, you know, you were raised in, you know. And so, no, I think it's a lot of winners in the black community. Um, it's a lot of amazingly successful black men, but they don't walk in their authority most times because they feel like, well, I'm not winning at his level, so I'm not winning. And it's like, no, you are winning. And until you, you know, garner your life as such and realize that you are going to be here tomorrow. There is going to be a future for you. You you know, you're just going to be living day by day. So that's my little moment. <laughs> yeah. I respect that. Yeah. yeah. Well, bro, let me let me move on, man. I'm trying to get as many questions in before I you know, end tonight. But I, I'm, I appreciate, Thank you. I appreciate you, bro. One, but shouts out to my bro O'Shea, you know what I mean, in the building. Why me, O'Shea don't call us? O'Shea didn't want to call us. If O'Shea want, if, if depending on what O'Shea doing right now, I put O'Shea up in here. But young Cyrus came back with six dollars saying, seeing, keep it coming. I appreciate that, bro. Let me take this call. But yeah, O'Shea, if O'Shea want to come in right now, I throw O'Shea in. What's going on? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, because I'm looking at the um, phone and it looks like I have it off from the, um, never mind, I'll just turn it off. Um, this conversation is very important to me because I feel that 
the reason why relationships are not working very well, as we see in the black community, is because, you know, women have lowered their standards of what it is to make the man, promote the man to be better. She allows him to say, you work on you, but I don't have to do anything because all I have to do is be a man and learn that word, submit, and say, Adam and Eve, and I'm good. No. A man is supposed to be ruled over by God. And I'm not saying being highly religious. I'm saying that he needs to be spiritual. I called before. Um, and he would have to change certain ways about himself according to whether or not they're supposed to even be dealing with one another. And you learn that through dating. And you learn that through conversating. And you learn that through time. You don't just run to the bedroom to get to the, to the, you know, the gusto of sex and then try to figure out who this man is or who this woman is that I'm laying next to. You need to figure all that stuff out and take your time to make sure that that person is worthy to do that. And I think that a lot of times that we're rushing and putting the cart above, you know, before the horse, and we're just living it, and then we're having babies, and all these other things are going on wrong, and too much stuff is going on wrong to where you can't clean it up. Because you didn't research the person, you didn't learn the person, you didn't know the person, and the only way you can do that is if you just abstain to learn them. And, you know, you know, unfortunately, a lot of men don't feel like they have to wait. Because they feel like they need it, need it. They let their physicality of wanting to get get it and claim and own, have ownership of the woman to, to be the reason why the woman won't wait or make them wait. But, you know, if a woman really was allowing herself to be read by God's spirit to help her to be renewed and changed within herself, her standard would change. If this man really wanted that woman, he would have to meet where she is. And if he couldn't do it, they should be in the home, period. Why would the woman have to step out of what it is that's beneficial to her to go, go above what God says to do that benefits her and do what the man wants quick without seeing what he's wanting to do in a relationship, or are they even 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 legal to begin with? You know, are they compatible? You know, does this man feel like he should be able to go through ten women in one month? Would, would that woman receive that idea? If he says, "Yeah, I feel like I should have ten women, whoever I want," you should just get in where you fit in. Then, if you don't believe that, you should not be carrying on with this person after that conversation. But if you don't have that conversation, how would you know? See what I'm saying? Yeah, we're listening to you. Okay, well, I, I just I just wanted to see what the women were saying because a lot of the conversation was about basically, you know, the features of a man. You know, in my opinion, a man, a whole man, knows God first. A whole man is patient. He's um, disciplined. He can control his ways. I mean, he, we're all human and we all think things. But if you have a man or a woman that's running around like they're foaming at the mouth and they have no control, no structure, no um, peace within their spirit to control their you know, carnality about themselves, and you have one that's above the other in another area, the other one is not nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near that, you guys got to figure that out to make sure that it's even working it's fine or you're wasting your time and then you're letting a lot of men run through you then you're getting all stretched out you're risking getting pregnant diseases all these things you need to preserve and protect yourself and take it more seriously than women are doing I think I think a lot of women jump into y'all out here getting stretched out <laughs> because they are allowing men to hell no to Amen. You know, sometimes to figure out 
if they're compatible? Is it, or is he going to be gone because you're taking too long? If he's not paying mm. us, would you want to be putting up with that? Would you right. bow down and deal with the guy? Because he said, I ain't waiting a month. I don't need too much. I mean, I think that patience and being more out of standards is required, period. Right. Mm -hmm. What's your name, caller? My name is Shana. Remember Hi, me, Shana. Oh. I heard you on the call the other night. Hey, Shana, I'm so glad you called back in. Yeah, this conversation actually was on my mind because, as I have said before, I've been single for about a year and three months, and I've deliberately took myself out of the scene of dealing with anyone because I wanted to work on myself. I really, really but I have the same bad habits I had before. I didn't want nobody to influence me to be this thing. I wanted to pull myself from that and focus on things that benefited me as a person that made me happy within myself. And I right. took a lot of things I didn't let, you know, my, you know, me being lustful lead me anymore. You know, my spirituality is leading me now because I was staying for over a year and I'm finding that I'm looking at people with different qualities that I never looked at before. Right. It's going to stick me in the long run. Amen. I celebrate you because you are an example of what everybody should do when they're trying to get their life together. Sit, get by yourself, really work on you so you can see clearly. So you speak in fact. Amen. Amen. And, and God, God is about to do some amazing things for you. And I appreciate everything that God is getting ready to do in your life. And I thank you for calling in. Yeah. I have to move on to the next family member. Okay. Thank you for calling in and God bless you and be blessed in the spirit. Amen. Shana. Okay. Right. Hi, Shana. I had a question for her, but maybe it was, it might've not been a good idea. So. No, no it wouldn't be <laughs> a good idea. I ain't <laughs> Another movie? God damn, that woman talked about 20 motherfuckers sit up there, yeah, and stab me and walked out. Uh, <laughs> when she called in, I'll be so sweet to her, but people be like, all right, man, I'm about to go get something to eat. I'll be back. Well, I, I live, I'm just going to put it out there, if you don't mind, Sin. I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. Um, and if she's listening now, um, this is just a question, no judgment whatsoever, but if as a woman, if you had in the past led a different lifestyle and you were attracted to the same sex, um, all those many years that you participated in that type of lifestyle and then um, you now, you know, you, you, things have changed for you and uh, now you're, you're on the other side of things. Um, what do you feel allows you um, or what, how do you gather your standards at that point? And then at a certain age, because I do remember that you were saying, uh, or the caller mentioned that she was in her, um, her 40s. 40. Um, so um, having lived on the other side of the, tra of the train tracks for some time, and also being uh, of a certain age, where do, where do you, where do you, uh, how do you, where do you start when you think about the type of standards that you, that you can command uh, or have at, at a certain point? And again, it's no disrespect. I hope that the way that I put it didn't come off as, as disrespectful or, or snide or anything like that. Um, but I just wonder though, how do you, how do you come to that conclusion that these are the type of, these are the types of things that you can ask for? Because I actually, um, Nicole and I, we were having a discussion um, some some time ago, um, and we were also talking about, um, or we were speaking with Minister Jap and O'Shea as well, and um, we were talking about like the value of a woman, and um, like what can she command at a certain point, and what has she amassed to be able to command these things. You know, if she's of a certain age, you know, her value drops down. If she has children, her value drops down. You know, all these different types of factors weigh in as, you know, when we consider, I guess, a woman's value, um, I guess, if you want to put it that way. So I just wonder 
how you how you come up with this these things. Um, okay, Carla, what's going on? Hello. What's going on, Yam? Yam! Hey, Yam! <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, I thought it was Yam. Oh. Uh, I, got a, I got a question that I want to ask. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. on the single mother that raises the son meaning that if she's a single mother that coddles her son makes her son her man you know or rejects her son because he looks like her you know the man who rejected her then you know you really can develop a different type of man but you if you are a I'm a single mother and I'm raising son so if you are the type of mother that you are encouraging nurturing but you allowing them to be you know walking their alpha maleness because you know all boys go through this period where they become they they like look you can't tell me anything instead of you trying to emasculate them as a woman you letting them walk in that authority and understanding that yeah um you know in my household the the the, the young men run the household meaning that i try to teach them that i'm honoring them because i want them to grow up as strong men and to walk in their authority so i think it depends on you know, what type of single mother raises that son in determining who he will become as a man. Now, I do understand, just period, point blank. I can't teach my child to be a man. I can only try to encourage his strength to develop and not oppress it. So, you know, it's my responsibility to keep him, you know, involved with his father, keep him involved with strong or keep them involved because I have twins, keep them involved with strong male role models so they can get that energy, right? But yeah, they absolutely see their mother. And I, I said, it'll, you know, sometimes I think it'll be hard for them to marry because they think I'm this superwoman, you know, and I'm like, this isn't normal, okay? But. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'll just say before they even go on, that um you know no matter you know what type of mother he had mm -hmm. he had a strong woman you know presiding over him and she might be uh you know depositing some some great things in him but he still cannot conform or perform the behavior of a man until he gets informed by a man he got to see these behaviors be exemplified you know to him in order for him to conform to that behavior. He got to, you know what I mean? Without a man, he gonna grow up pretty much not, not balanced. You know, as great as that woman is, hold on, it's gonna be some things that he's going to miss. I had a great mother, you know what I mean? A great grandmother, but it was still some things that I missed. I had to get that from different guys in the street. I had to get that from different people at church. I had to get that from people I looked up to and value. You know, I learned how to run a house or learn how to run women and preside over women by going to different ministers' houses, 
going to different gangsters' places and, you know what I mean, seeing the way pimps preside over their women. So I learned structure, you know what I mean, from viewing and observing, you know, other men on how they presided over their family. And that's how I was able to conform to the behavior of a man by observing another man, not because this woman was so great and she, uh, you know, she just was just so infinite minded that she was uh, uh, able to teach me how to be a man. No, even with the information that that woman is giving to that young male that's endeavoring to be a man, she got that from observation. She got that, you know what I mean, from observing men. You know what I mean? And that information she's given to her child. But that shit only can go so far. He can learn a lot, you know what I mean, from his mother. He can learn a lot from women. But he still need to be around a damn man. He need to be around men exemplifying the behavior of a damn man. And that's why we got a lot of these weak males today. That's why we even got some of these guys that say that they're gangsters and, you know what I mean, they're really feminine. You know what I mean? Because they was raised by their mama. And when they come out into the streets, they emotionally react just like their mama. They don't know how to rationalize. They don't know how to socialize, you know, and talk things over. He get into an attitude just like his mama. You know what I mean? He got to be around a damn man. But uh, what was you what was you trying to say, partner? Can't really hear him too well. Don't know what he's saying. Okay. I want to hear him. Okay, can you hear him now? Can Very faintly. If you on speakerphone, just get off speakerphone and put the phone to your ear. I can't even hear what's going on with y'all because I actually stopped the video and everything so I can just speak to y'all right now. But um, if you need me to call back, I'll call back right now so we can get a better connection. All right, blessings to you. Real 
really just to keep it uh, all the way 100, you know, uh, I appreciate what the brother was saying with, you know, being a man, his mother, and shouts out to his mother, you know what I mean? God bless all the mothers that was mothers indeed. Um, but I want y'all to stick, you know what I mean, to the topic, man. You know what I mean? And I want you to bring something that's, you know, good to the topic. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try to take one more call. I'm going to take one more call. You know what I mean? And hopefully this one more call, you know, it's a good call. Hopefully it's pertaining to the subject. You ain't talking about your bunions. You ain't talking about the first time you peed on yourself and your mama had to sit up there and change your drawers. You know what I'm saying? Like, just come with, you know what I mean, to get down, man. Okay, hello? Yes, can you hear me? Can y'all hear? Yes. 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 How's everybody doing? I just wanted to say this is my first time calling you. And the ladies are beautiful, and you are looking sexy, quite different near yourself, Mr. P. Uh, thank you. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so the, the, the job is talking about a lot of things, and I just wanted to say, what do women want from men? We want our men to be strong. We want our men to protect us. We want our men to do the things that they need to do. And this, I don't know, the younger generation today is like the young men, they don't want to help a woman to achieve anything. And they think that women are out to get their money when they don't even have money. So it's a little confusing. You know, we have a lot of women who are making money, but of course they still want men. They don't want little boys. Now, I've been married almost 30 years. My husband, you might be able to hear him outside of me snoring because <laughs> he snores pretty loud. Okay, but um, being married, like the kids today, y'all don't want to get married. I don't understand it. It's almost like you don't, you're trying to figure out why you want to get married. And then when you turn in your 40s and 50s, then you're going to realize why you should have gotten married because you don't want to go through life alone. And someone asked a question about are there winners in our communities? There are a lot of winners, both males and females, in the black community. But sometimes just to make it, we need to come together. You know, uh, my husband and I, we had to come together. He, he did his portion in our life. I did my part so we could make it. You know, so we can, we can just live and, and be able to take care of our children. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have been able to do it by myself. I don't know if he would have been able to do it by himself. But that's what families are. You know, we come together. We love each other. And we have to breadwinner in my household, but he hasn't always been that way. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to this conversation because this is awesome. You have some awesome women on that panel. <laughs> um, did I talk too long? No, no you did not. We enjoy you. That's why everybody was speaking in the language of silence because we was actually listening to what you're saying. And the women were in agreement with what you were saying. So yeah. that's why nobody interrupted you. Well, I just want to say they are women. Um, and, you know, I love my brother. I really do. And I love somebody in the comment section. Sorry for the snoring in the background. <laughs> but somebody in the snoring uh, in the comment section, Lala, you could tell immature young women. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and our biggest is their fault. I think it's, like you said, there's a lot of single parents, single mothers who raise these young men. And young men, men, just like you said, I agree with you 100%. They need a man in the household, or whether it's the father, a grandfather, uncles, you know what I mean? To you single ladies out there, single parents, you need to get some strong men in your boy's life. I, I, I want to ask, ask a comment. Go ahead. Caller, um, 
So you've been married for this long. What would you say are some of the main factors that kept you and your husband together and uh, in a successful union for this amount of time? our marriage, I've had to learn my place, you know, being a female and being a strong black female, but I had, um, because my father was in the household, I understood how to make sure that my husband always knows that he's the man, you know, and give him a voice, and whether he's right or wrong, I'm not here to tear him down, I've never actually said anything real nasty towards my husband, even in arguments. You know, and a lot of young women, they do that when you get angry, you get vicious, your mouths get vicious. But you got to understand, you're talking to the man you chose, the man you chose to love. Why would you want to beat him down like that? Your household is supposed to be where you, where you can come and be safe, where he can come and just be naked if he wants to be, you know, and not be protective of himself. I don't want him to be afraid of me. So, therefore, I had to learn. I definitely had to, you know, make sure that I... Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, wake up? Was that the alarm? I don't know what y'all got going on. You Hold on. I was going to say this, too. Um, I was like, the fizz is coming. To Hold on. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> They, they was like, they coming for us. You right. know, this that she said that made me think of something, too, is that, you know, women desire men who honor them, you know, and also men desire women who honor them. You know, we think about, she was saying about not saying something so nasty. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this in my relationships. I can't even say that that was me because if he thought he was going to cut me with his words, I was going to you know, cut them 10 times deeper with my words um, because I felt like that was me defending myself. But it's important to note that as a, a man, a man should never honor someone above the woman he's with. Like you guys talk about it as peas, you know, that the, the down, I should give more respect to her than just a square woman. You know, a square woman want a man who can honor her. You know, you can't be treating your coworkers better than you treating your spouse or the woman you interested in. And the same goes for a woman. You can't be honoring all these different men, but then your man, you talking to him any kind of way, you know, you taunting him, you basically picking at him, but then you honoring all these other people. That's out of order, out of order. So I just had to say that. Okay. A long time, so we've grown. But we've had some issues, you know, throughout our marriage in the beginning, especially. So, for those of you who might be married and going through it, sometimes you just stick it out, you know? Right. Mm. It is what it is. Somebody but might be the head That's of the another thing. I consider, you know, Jay asked earlier about, you know, where we went winners. See, I consider a man that's a winner that never gives up that's consistent, that stays true to his commitment. And I mean, it seems just like you said, you and your husband had some type of, you know, issues in the beginning, but you guys stayed committed. He stayed consistently, you know, he honored, you know, his decision to commit to you. You know, he honored his love, which is action towards you by saying, hey, I'm not giving up. Right, and I did the same. And I think, you know, I've done things that you know, it is, we are all human. You know, you got to imagine uh, uh, marriage is like two different people who come from different areas. Like, I'm from Louisiana. He's from Delaware. We met while we were in the military. And then we, we came together in different attitudes, different lifestyles. So, uh, we come into this thing. It fits together as one. It doesn't always work. Even still today, it, it could be some little arguments. You know, but I don't call them arguments. They're more, today we have discussions. Mm. Mm. We have, we can sit down and listen. Nobody's voices get loud. And, you know, if you feel like I'm getting, like if he thinks he's saying something to hurt my feelings, he'll say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You 
you know, and, and I didn't mean it that way, and then he'll clear it up. It's just all about how you handle people with respect. Mm-hmm. And that's Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Ooh, well, God, I well, you. well, God bless you and your marriage, and I appreciate you for calling in. And I appreciate you all for this discussion tonight. You I mean, Miss Af- well, hold on, bro, that came in here with twenty dollars. I didn't even see that, bro. Came in with the twenty twin twin. You know what I mean? Blessings to you, bro. What, what was you saying, baby? No, I'm saying have a good night. Okay, God Thank bless. You. And don't make too much noise because your husband trying to get some sleep, man. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate that call. Um, yeah. It was full of wisdom because you never know what someone else does, um, you know, or what someone else has to offer you that you might not even be aware of that would help you, just a little tidbit to help you to get along um, a little bit further or something that you might not have tried to make a relationship that you've had in the past or that you'll have in the future more successful because you hadn't even considered, you know, something that they might've mentioned or shared. And especially after all those years of success, you know, I really appreciate um, her sharing, you know, those tips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, did you want to give some information just in case if somebody decided to have a conversation with you later on, uh, Paulina. Oh, yes. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Paulina Johnson, MBA. Please find me on Instagram at Achieve Against All Odds. Find me on Facebook at Achieve Against All Odds. And please, please, my first book. See? Hey, find it, Paulina. Achieve Against All Odds. It's available on Amazon. And also you can DM me, um, reach out to me on Facebook and yes, purchase a copy. It's a great book. I am you achieving against all odds. Hold on, I'm getting ready to put the link to Paulina's uh, channel. So for those of you that would like to Subscribe, I'm gonna give you the chance. Apache joins good. Thank you. Hey Apache. Talking. Hello. Show my book. <laughs> okay, the links that I'm putting in. That's Pauline. Thank you. Thank you all. Please click on those links. Subscribe to my channel. I didn't know you were an author, Paulina. Yes, I'll be releasing my second book soon. Mm. Yeah, Paulina got it going on. Yeah, so my second book is When Success Calls Achieve Against All Odds. Let me pub this a little bit. So it'll be out shortly. Um, My theory is that when success calls our name, that's when we really encounter the the greatest obstacles. I always say, when you ain't about, you know, nothing, you don't want to do anything, nothing comes your way. But as soon as you make that decision, to say, you know what, I'm about to be something. I'm going to do something with my life. I'm going to accomplish this goal. All hell start breaking loose. And I always say, that's the, that's the first time you realize that you really need to persevere to achieve against all odds. So I always say, when success calls, achieve against all odds, because that's when they'll meet you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, Apache just brought her big head ass up in here. What's going on? <laughs> Hello. Greetings to everybody on the panel. Hey, hey. Hey. Coming all up in uh on the ass end of the uh convo, but let me just get My bad. a little a little in with you before we bounce then. Um okay. what is it that you want from a man? What is it that you desire from a man, Apache? Well, simple that's <laughs> a very loaded question um and just to give background of the way i was raised um my family was in the nation of islam they converted over to orthodox islam and i was raised to always be submissive and to be 
quiet and seen I heard was still intelligent at the end of the day I wasn't raised to be a doormat so with that being said I think that number one a woman wants security and a man should definitely provide security honesty loyalty um, honor because if I honor a man he should honor me as well and um just, just be the truth. As you said, you know, a man is the truth. And I think that that is all encompassing because uh, if you have integrity and you have an upstanding character, then a woman will naturally want to follow you. I mean, it's in our nature. And I think that now we've gotten to a point where gender roles have been blurred so much that we miss our place. And sometimes you know, we want to overpower the man and tell him what to do, but I don't really think that that's the best way. And I think that a woman should always know her place and she should want to follow a man, a real man. And a real man, as you say, is the truth. Okay. So let me ask you this. Have you ever been with a man before? Once, once in my lifetime, I've been with a man. Okay. Other than that, it was just fun and games. Okay, and you know what? What was the uh, what was the benefits of being with a man versus being with a male that professes to be a man? The benefits were I achieved a lot of my own personal goals. Um, wow. I, well, just having the guidance and having someone stay on top of me about the things that I need to get done. Because with Black women, sometimes we suffer from just wanting to do a lot of things, having a vision, but not really having the fortitude to see it come into fruition and manifest. So I think that a man, you know, if you break it down, there's, there's the yin and the yang, there's a positive and the negative, there's a light and the dark. And I think that we're supposed to be together because without the proton and the neutron, you're not really manifesting. That's the that's the base nature of matter. So a proton and a neutron is what puts things into being. And that's the exact same thing with a man and a woman. That creates the feminine and the masculine aspect. And when you have both and they're balanced, then that's when you start to manifest your goals. Okay. Let me ask you this. What are the things that you desire, you know, spiritually from a man? I definitely desire to ascend. You know, there's a part of us, our intuition, our, our super conscious, or our God self, that has a longing to always want to be better and do better and want more and do more. And I think that a part of, you know, reaching your goals and, and being spiritually astute is to just constantly be able to break down barriers and ascend to the next level spiritually. So it's always a test. And I look at it as a pyramid. And when you have a pyramid, every time you go up, even though it gets more narrow, you have more sophisticated obstacles to face. And I think that a man or masculine energy definitely helps us to ascend and fight the battles because we're not supposed to be alone. So I think that a man kind of helps us to ascend and get to the top of the pyramid. <clears throat> okay, but well, what do you want from him spiritually? Do you want him to give you edification? Do you want him to give you uh, uncommon information about the Most High? Does uh, he have to have a doctrinal belief, you know, to be with you? Mm. Does he believe? Uh, for, for me, for me, I want him to show me that there's more always because I'm highly spiritually evolved, but I, I'm always wanting and longing for someone who can show me that, Oh, you think you, you think you there, you think you're at the top. Guess what? You can do better. And it doesn't have to necessarily be one certain indoctrination, but I prefer a man who's more astute across the board. So mm -hmm. not necessarily religious. You don't have to be a good Christian or a good Muslim or a good Jew or, whatever else there is to teach me that I can continue to go higher and, and continue to better myself, but just 
pull that part of me that I haven't reached yet, that dark part of the soul, pull that from me and show me that I can still, oh, I might be a little bit scared or I might have some fear or reservation, but guess what? You can do better. You can be better. You can achieve more. And I want to, for me, I would like for a man to teach me how to be infinite. Mm. So you, mm. so you want a sinful individual? That's mm-hmm. what it sounds like, don't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> sounds sound like you want <laughs> sound like you want you a sinful type of nigga. But anyway, I, I might, I might need, I might need that. Yeah, check you out. But let, let me let me let me ask you this. Um, what do you want sexually out of a man? Like can oh, he man. like does he have to be, you know what I mean, uh blessed in that area? Or can he come bringing no blessings or small blessings and still uh you know uh, be able to do his thing with you? What's happening? Well, sexually I am pretty sexually evolved, but at the same time, I'm not driven by sex. I'm driven by intellect and intelligence. So sexually, I would like a man who's unafraid, who's unapologetic, but still maintains a level of um, personal integrity. And so he's not going to let everybody do everything with him, to him and for him. But when he meets someone who he feels that he's equally yoked with, then he he pushes the envelope. He pushes his limits. He pushes the boundaries and he sees where he can uh, go. And um, the Jacob's ladder that they speak of in the Bible, I interpret it as uh, spiritual sexuality. And I interpret it as two people becoming one two people vibrating at such a high frequency by going to places that they've never been before, by journeying to the to the the outer world, to the the dark parts of their mind that they've never been before and really just so, exploring so each other where, and exploring themselves. So in other words, you want you an intelligent nigga with good dick. Because yes, okay, so absolutely you're a sapiosexual that likes, you know what I mean, a man you know what I mean? That can hold a decent, he got a good conversation. He's full of knowledge. He's full of information. But yes. he's still got to have good fornication. You know what I'm saying as well. Without no. any complications. Let's add that to Or yeah. reservations. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, 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 okay. This, this particular man that you desire, you want somebody that is a leader. He, of course, you know, that's what a man is. He's bold. Um, and I, I, as I was teaching somebody earlier today to make sure that you read, make sure that you yes. become knowledgeable, because the more knowledgeable you become, the more powerful you become, the more uh, wiser you become, the more powerful you become. May and I interject more- really quickly? Go ahead. Not only is it important to read, because books are cool and all, but <clears throat> we also have to go inside ourselves. And we have to be non-biased and, and take our ego out and look at ourselves from a third person and see what can we learn inside ourselves without looking outwards for guidance. What can we learn within us and not be afraid to really face the demons that we have? So books are cool, but if you're not using the knowledge and you're not active and you're not doing the work, then books mean nothing. Well, if you look inside uh, yourself, what do you <laughs> What are you looking for? Where is the inspiration coming from? I would say that the inspiration is coming from us connecting to the higher power. And How the higher you, power is constantly telling us there's more. Who taught you that? Who taught you that it was a higher power? My grandfather, my father, and, my uncles. Right. And where did they get the knowledge from? Um, outside of reading the, the Holy Quran. They also were very reflective. Stop. So, <laughs> so they got that from the Holy Quran, right? Yes. Originally, so that means that they had to read in the order Ikra. to get that. You understand me? See, you're trying to like <laughs> walk around this pimping. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You can't, get, 
For real. Figure out bitch may not be cat lazy color. I'm Read on the name of that is, After you finish looking into your big head ass self, because <laughs> I ain't trying to give these motherfuckers a sit. Like, damn, I could be dumb. I don't got to read. I could just look into myself. No, no. No, nigga, I don't want you looking into your dumb ass self. Pick up that motherfucking dictionary and read. Pick up books and read. Yeah. Get, make it a habit to read. Then you can look into yourself and be deep and right. say, as I look into my inner self, I see the political <laughs> part of my life. You can do all that <laughs> on your time, but you need to read. Um, but you know, I'm so used to speaking to well, you, a highly evolved individual and people that I feel like are on my level. So I forget that I'm addressing the masses. Can I ask Apache something? You can ask. You can ask whatever. I like the way you said it. It was, <laughs> it was just so nasty. Can I ask? <laughs> so, okay. Well, this is, a, this is actually something that I know um, she she has to be like familiar with to be uh, an orthodox Muslim. I know you're familiar with um, ablution. Yes. After or before you make prayer or make salat. Yes, um, ablution or wudu or wudu. Right. So you have to right. make sure that you're clean. Right. So um, I feel like a lot of men, um, because the, you know, the topic today is what really, what, what women really want uh, from a man um, and excuse me, pardon my vulgarity here, but we need that ass to be clean. So when you go and you prepare yourself for prayer in Orthodox Muslim religion, and I hate to fuse the two, but you clean that ass. Like you go to the, the restroom and you actually wet a cloth and you clean, you clean <laughs> all of that so there's no dick butter, there's oh, no God. nut sauce, whatever this, this, that, but there's a lot of men out there with skid marks in their drawers. Mm. And this is one thing that I really want from a man. Like, I don't want him to have yes, skid wait marks. Wait <laughs> I know this is really left. This is not sexy. No, hold, on, hold on. Rewind this shit. First of all, you're not going to disrespect men by saying that they got shit marks in their drawers. You could say you know, males that profess to be men. But ain't no man, he just comfortable. He got shit stains all up in this motherfucking drawers. And he just, ah. you know, man, just cool with this shit. Not no man. Ah. I don't know what type of man y'all was dealing with. He got shit all up in his drawers. And y'all talking about he a man. And he just cool with them shit stains, having an email address, a residence in his goddamn drawers. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, I'm saying what I'm saying so is So wait a minute, you might have been so you washed the niggas drawers or something one time and you no. found, found some skin marks. He was like, wait a minute, what this nigga on? No, th this is simply a PSA <laughs> because yeah. you think a lot of men out here know how to wash themselves thoroughly. They right. put on the cologne. They nails. have the clean sneakers. They have the clean nails. They have the haircut. You know, all these things. But they don't know how to wipe that ass. And and then, like, everything else, <laughs> it cancels everything else out. You know, they have every the, everything else is perfect. Yeah, look at but that part right there, look you know, so. Oh, no. Cause I know the fellas is like, Sorry. <laughs> so this, wait a minute. So the nigga got, the nigga got his hair cut, he got clean hands and feet. The nigga wow. got clean off and on, but someone wash his ass. Sin, there's men in your comments right now that are actually saying men are, have skid marks. So this is a common theme here. Like oh, a lot of men don't really know how they address let everything this, else. Let me go through this motherfucking comment section. Hold on. Let the suit out. might be being clean and pressed. Hillary is but being they don't. Text. <laughs> and it's not even about who I'm around. It's about right. just some men. And that's it. That's the thing that you know a lot of people haven't addressed. You know because they feel like at a certain age, this is like common knowledge. Like you know how to clean, like wipe your ass. See, I'm not uh, sure everybody agree with I'm this. I'm just happy I can mention that uh, behavior. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, saying review this shit. So. <laughs> in layman's terms, th this is a PSA to get rid of that DNA in your undergarments. 
Yes, and the reason I brought it to you, Apache, was because um, when the Orthodox, when um, like with the ablution, yes, um, like a lot of women do this, you know, when they use the restroom, of course, they have right. like their baby wipes or whatever wipes or whatever, or they just, they're by the sink or whatever. Well, usually Men in don't... the mosque, there's like a, a bottle of water that women use yeah. in the mosque. So there's a and whole thing. Too. Yeah, and so that that's not even like, something that's not considered in everyday functions in life but for people that are that might be outside of that they might not have ever even considered maybe i should put some water on this before i uh wipe <laughs> myself ah, <laughs> put you know? water on this. That's yeah crazy. like oh my gosh like, see this these are these are basic but they're not it's basic, but it's really not that basic oh, because a lot of people haven't even considered that. It sounds like you've been look, uh, messing with little Day Day and them that been on the corner for three No, months. I haven't. There's a lot of, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there there's some men in your comment, they're not going to fess up, but they're going to, um, they haven't been doing what you might be doing, Sin, you know? See, so okay. is, well, first of all, if he say that he's a pimp, if he say that he's a pimp, he has to be clean. If we, if, if mm -hmm. Pippa was a religion, that's part of it. He has, <clears throat> he got to smell right. He got to be up to par. He can't be having no dirty ass draws. <laughs> let me say this. You cannot have funky ass shit marks in your draws and be this Pippa. That ain't Wait, no. <laughs> Pips don't roll like that. Pips don't roll like that at all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, matter of fact, let me uh, take it far. Men, 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 <laughs> men, like put the pimp shit aside. Men, men ain't walking around with no motherfucking shit stain in his drawers. You know what I mean? No, this don't, they don't even go together. You know what I'm saying? Don't no man put on no, he funky as hell. Then he put on cologne to cover it up. You know what I mean? And all of that. Oh, hell no. You know what I'm saying? Men don't do that. Y'all been dealing with a lot of males that see that hygiene. See, this is why a lot of women, Critical. a lot of guys be like, man, you know why she ain't, she ain't want to suck my dick? Did she move on to the next nigga and she's sucking more dick than a little bit? It's because, nigga, your hygiene might wasn't right with God. You Your hygiene got to be right with God when you a damn man. But see, it's not exactly. like messing with little CJ. And little Ray Ray and them, you know what I mean? And, uh, 180 Kevin, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, AK 40 Steven and them ain't watch their draws. But I'm trying to tell you that no, men watch <laughs> me and wash their ass. Nicole, me and wash their ass. You know what I mean? I, this ain't, yes, this ain't for debate. Me and wash their ass. You cannot be no man and you just around here just with dirty ass draws and shit. I don't know who y'all been, god damn. So no wonder when women like finally meet a pimp or be with a pimp, she like, see now I get it when they be like, my baby daddy, he used to do, or my boyfriend, he did this. Y'all ain't never been with no man to just carry himself with the business. You know, I have, um, but I also know some men don't wash their ass. That's just a given. So I'm just saying, you know, there's there's two uh, there's a flip side to that coin. Let me ask you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't disrespect a man, men, you know, uh, by man. saying that it's a man. Hell no. Nah. I'm gonna say. <laughs> I didn't mean to take this down down the rabbit hole. I just yeah. wanted to speak on the ablution. Um, no man, you know, man. Let me say this to all the niggas right now. If you just sitting in this comment section and you got dirty ass draws on and shit like that, stop telling these women that you a man. You're not no motherfucking man. You can have a good job. You might have a cool car, a place to live. But if you cool walking around with dirty ass draws, with defecation all up in the location of your motherfucking draws, this is not manly. <laughs> this ain't manly. <laughs> all right, let me let me go ahead. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, you and Apache, y'all. Sitting over there talking about the evolution of this dick. I mean, with prayer, whatever y'all was talking about. <laughs> evolution. That's a cold video, the evolution of this dick. Um, but yeah, getting back into 
you know, what y'all was in. Y'all was talking about uh, high frequencies in the pussy. Uh, uh, some, you know, what's going on? And reading and praying, and, you know, washing the drawers. And it's good for a man to wash his ass and then pray to the most high. Like, what was y'all talking <laughs> he a little fun with gave up some pussy now. Oh, I see sunshine up in here. It's really borderline special. Bro, come on, man. I couldn't let them put that on the men, bro. Ain't no man just <laughs> oh man. Ain't no man with no shit marks in his draw. See, I had the type of grand uh, that Clemmy, Clemmy would beat your ass. I never forget. He like, hey! Nigga, get up here! Like, what's 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 going on? Boy, do you see? Do you see this uh, urine under this uh, toilet seat, nigga? What you in a rush? Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean. You had to be a certain way. You know, like, you a man? Yeah, I'm a man. Not if you sitting over here peeing on seats, nigga. So you know what I mean. You just had to be. A certain way, Tony. You know what I mean? And I know that some of these guys didn't have that. And see, that's why I say a man is a necessity. Some of y'all didn't have a lot of women pacifying y'all. Oh, it's okay, baby. And your mama was cleaning after your ass. You know what I mean? And and, and being a mother. Some of you niggas is 30, 40 years old, and your mama still treating you like you're 10 and 12 and shit. And that's what you needed. You needed a man to tell you to bring your little funky ass back up in here and, and clean up this motherfucking toilet seat, boy, before I beat your ass. Matter of fact, I'm going to beat your ass, uh, but clean up this toilet seat right now. That's what you needed. Because mama was sitting over there pacifying you, and she wasn't correcting you. And that's why a lot of you niggas is older now. Some of you don't know how to uh, cook for you. You don't know how to cook. You don't know how to wash. You don't know how to do nothing on your own. You know what I mean? Some of you, it's not that you're a pimp. Some of you just don't know how to do something on your own. So you need a bitch, you know what I mean, to do something because you don't have the knowledge to do that shit yourself. Because mama did it all. Mama did. I was going to buy a number five at Taco Bell, but I'd rather give it to the gang. Good looking Kenny. Kenny decided to sacrifice the tacos, you know what I mean, and sit up there, you understand, man, dedicate, you know what I mean, the bankroll. Five dollars, man. Good looking, man. What's going on, good go? So what happens is when a woman just keeps pacifying, you know, this child, he grow up thinking that this shit is all right. And then he gets into situationships, he gets into battleships that he thinks that's relationships, and he looks for his girlfriend to be his damn mama. He looking for his girlfriend to treat him like his mama been treating him his whole goddamn life. But this ain't no man. You know what I mean? Man gonna wash his ass, man. Man gonna get all up in that ass. He ain't gonna be just sitting over there just walking around with a stanking ass and shit. And any woman that stay with a man, knowing that, you understand me, he got abominations in his drop. Right. You know what I'm saying? Something is wrong. Something is unclean about, like I always say, uh, unclean men attract, well, unclean males attract unclean females. Unclean females attract unclean males. Like, now let's say that again. That's fact. It, if you got a guy with dirty fingernails and you letting him just rub all on your coochie and shit, it's because you're a nasty bitch. You know what I'm saying? If the nigga uh, balls are stinking, he don't like to wash his balls, it's because he know he don't have to wash his balls. He know you're going to suck the motherfuckers anyway and you a stinking ass bitch. Um, if, you know, you don't like to uh, keep your pussy clean, if your pussy is <laughs> uh, uh, nasty, it's funky, you know what I mean? And the reason why you don't feel like you have to wash your pussy thoroughly or wash your ass thoroughly is because you think or you got a nice shape and you know you know this nigga gonna fuck you anyway and eat your pussy because he's a nasty ass nigga and nine's out of 10, he don't really even get pussy like that. So he feel like he getting lucky or he blessed to have a funky ass bitch opening up her legs to his dirty ass. You know what I mean? But dirty niggas attract dirty bitches. You know what I mean? A clean, fly nigga, he's not going to fuck no nasty-ass bitch. And if that bitch is funky, you know what I mean? No matter how thick she is, if her place is unclean, if her place is nasty, man, 
you know what the video is. The appearance of a woman's house is the reflection of her mind. So a fly nigga ain't even fucking no bitch in no dirty ass house. The moment that he see that this house is nasty and dirty, it turns a fly nigga off. He's not gonna sit up there and even bless, you know what I mean, a bitch with no dick, none of that. You know what I mean? Why? Because having pussy and all of that shit to a fly nigga is as easy as a uh, motherfucking breathing the air of God. You know, a fly nigga's not thirsty over no motherfucking pussy. You know, that shit comes just like that. And it's billions of her, and it's only one of me. This is a fly nigga's mentality. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, some of you niggas be so appreciative that a bitch opened her legs to you. You know, she feel like she ain't got to wash up. She ain't even got to. God damn. You know what I mean? I come Y'all going to make me do another video on hygiene. That shit crazy. I, Go ahead. Can I say something, Sam? Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say that um, that's not my thing, but it definitely is a thing that does exist amongst men and uh, women. But I mean, because I'm a woman, I can more readily identify it amongst men. So that's the only reason why I brought it up. And like, a, hold on, hold on, hold on. If he don't take care of his hygiene, how is he a man? How is he a man? Well, the, the male gender. Okay, go ahead. Um, so that that's all. And um, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, he could no, have on. Listen, could, I was could. never, listen, for all the listeners, I was not implying, I was not saying that, you know what I mean, uh, Hillary's pussy is not right with God. And that's the way she was bringing me. That is not what I'm saying. You I know. know. It's here. Come on. It, I was, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> you wasn't saying that. What nobody thinking about that? Everybody know your pussy smell like the garden to eat. You're working out. You do what you're supposed to do. Shouts out to Hillary's pussy. But at the same time, to you motherfuckers that do not wash up, you don't take no motherfucking showers and shit like that, you know what I mean? You got the game fucked up. You know, part of doing what's vital to your title is of a man is to be clean. You know what I mean? And for those of you that like, you know what I mean? You like getting head. You like to fuck. You know what I mean? You have to keep your dick smelling right. You know what I mean? You got to have that shit right. You can't be, you know what I mean, smelling like demonic spirits and shit down there. And for you bitches, some of y'all thick as hell, you find like bells above. Yeah, you can't be smelling like, you know what I mean? Uh never you never you kept Nazza down there, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta get that shit back. You know, bitch got uh, she smelling like uh um uh, see y'all probably wouldn't even know that. She smelling like mandrakes and shit. But okay. <laughs> Check, this Check this out. You know for what I mean? Record. Matter of fact, Apache, where you at? She got her shit on. Hold on. For the record. I mean. <laughs> okay. I hope this conversation didn't make you, uh, you know what I mean, uh, get sexual and start. Because you disappeared once I started talking about sex. No, I'm charging my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 You know what I mean? But. I appreciate you guys for coming through. We appreciate you. Like that. We started talking about sex. The patch just disappeared. I'm like, is she masturbating? But um, dig that. You know what I mean? She charging her phone. Blessings to her. Okay, but Paulina pr uh, promoted her book. She promoted, you know what I mean, her channel. Uh, Nicole. I want to uh, give Nicole the opportunity to promote her channel. So you guys can go over there and you can subscribe. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my channel is Inner Beauty TV. Go over there, like and subscribe and click on the notifications, please. We're growing. Um, I do ladylike lessons. I just released one today. Um, number four. So we're getting up there. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Nicole Michelle, Nicole Michelle, page two. I set it off on a daily basis. Those that follow me, um, they know I set it off daily. Get people talking. And um, the inner beauty movement. I'm a femininity influencer for the inner beauty movement. And um, my focus is to reconnect younger black women to um, their feminine core. And so uh, we're growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, this year has been great. God has been good. So 
Um, you can look us up in the Inner Beauty Movement on Facebook, and you can also look up Inner Beauty Movement Women's Healing and Ladylike Lessons. Um, that's strictly all women's group where women can go and um, just talk to other women about things that they're dealing with in their personal lives and get healing. So that's how you can find me. But definitely go to Inner Beauty TV by Nicole Michelle today. Like and subscribe. Okay, the links that I've been putting in um, the comment section, that's to Nicole's channel. Okay, uh, those of you that are going to watch this video, you know what I mean, uh, even after it's, it's over, you know, I want you to, to head over there. Let's get Nicole, let's hurry up and get Nicole over a thousand. She's at like yes, I'm so uh, close. Let's let's hurry up and get her over a thousand. Let's hurry up and get Paulina over a thousand. Let's hurry up, you know what I mean, and get Hillary's fine ass over a thousand. You know what I mean? She's constantly putting up, you know what I mean, new content. You know what I mean? All three of them. Apache has a channel as well. I'm gonna allow her to uh promote her channel as well. But you know what I mean? Let's get these ladies over a thousand. And it shouldn't be hard because you men like attractive black women. And all four of these ladies are very attractive and they got some information that would make any man be attentive to them. So by all means, let's hurry up and get these ladies over a thousand uh, subscribers and you know, uh, share, share, be a blessing to the game, be a blessing to the information. You know what I mean? Even if you see a woman that you might not be attracted to, but the information is profitable. Share the information so the information can be a blessing uh, to somebody else. Uh, Hillary, I want you to uh, speak about the content at your channel, speak about the things that you're doing in your life, and uh, I want you to promote you while I put your, uh, I want to put your link in the comment section to give the fellas the opportunity to uh, go over there and subscribe to your channel as well. Um, yes, my name is Hillary, and um, my channel is Healthy with Hillary. That's Hillary with one L and that's all together. And you can also find me on Instagram at healthy with Hillary. Um, so the upcoming content, uh, what you should be able to expect would be um, a lot of um, weight training, calisthenics, plyometrics and um, Pilates as well. Uh, I know a lot of people are not entirely familiar with Pilates, but that is what um, actually addresses the structural integrity of the body so that you're able to lift heavy weights and um, lift your body weight and calisthenics and all these other things. Um, it's more of a rehabilitative type of um, physical activity. So um, you can expect that type of content coming and please subscribe. I need to follow you. Yes. <laughs> And I'm located in the Los Angeles area uh, for anyone that might be. And Apache? My channel is so inconsistent, though. It's inconsistent? Yes, but um, on my channel, I speak on spiritual sexuality and women's health. And um, I believe in everything that happens to us health-wise stems from a spiritual reason and we oftentimes look like oh it's fall or oh, i'm getting sick but really there's a deeper energetic meaning to why you're sick so uh i have a few shows on there that are like an hour two hours long and it speaks on how to emotionally physically energetically heal yourself from previous relationships how to cleanse yourself properly because a lot of women don't know and just how, how to be a better woman, like how to be healthy, how to be happy, how to maintain that inner glow, maintain your power, and, and just be a boss bitch. Okay. Um, matter of fact, do me a favor, uh, Apache. Make, do you have your phone with you? Yeah, Get I'm your on my phone, phone back. right now. Yeah, go ahead, and <clears throat> go ahead and make a comment in the comment section. Patchy want to teach you uh, how to be a, a boss bitch. I don't, <laughs> want guys, I don't want you males. I don't want some of you guys going over there talking about when does the class start. 
You know what I mean? You <laughs> niggas trying to learn how to be a boss bitch. Well, well, not necessarily um, a boss in like the the monetary way, but a boss as being of sound mind and body, and learning how to. I don't want the guys going over there trying to be a boss bitch. No matter what, how you, what category it is, I don't want the guys over there trying to be a boss bitch. So, <laughs> so uh, it was really for the ladies, but fellas, if you want to go over there. You go learn how to be a boss bitch. You know, <laughs> to go to uh, Apache Channel. And she about Don't to learn from me. I'm still learning. She about to teach you niggas how to be a boss bitch. Some of you niggas thought that she was boss bitches already. She about to get y'all the game on how to boss <laughs> up and be a better boss bitch. Look at some of these. Some niggas is ready to argue now. I can see one nigga now talking about, I'm already a boss. Hold on, excuse me. If you already, you know what I mean, a boss bitch, it is what it is. But I appreciate, you know, all of these beautiful women for coming out, uh, definitely for uh, fellowshipping, you know what I mean, with me, tolerating me, you know what I mean? And I appreciate you guys for staying up with me and being a blessing, you know what I mean, as well. Uh, I'm not even going to give my information. Y'all already know my information. You know what I mean? I appreciate y'all. I was just only concerned about the ladies promoting their channels. Uh, y'all already know yeah. about my it is. If y'all want oh, to. Also, also, my um, my Instagram is more in depth about spiritual healing and spiritual cleansing. And my Instagram is the exact same as my YouTube channel. So, but it's private because I talk about some esoteric stuff over there. So, if you want to follow me, my Instagram is the same as the YouTube. That is all. Ladies, did you have anything to say before we uh, leave? Paulina, Nicole, Hillary, Apache, did you have anything that you wanted to say and convey to the people before we depart? No, I don't. Just, well, yes, I do. Share this video out and see you soon. Yes, thank you, ladies. Um, it was such a pleasure speaking with all of you, and thank you, Sin, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh. Sin, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's always a pleasure every time we get together. Um, ladies, if you haven't been to my Facebook page, everybody go to it. I'm doing a Facebook Live tomorrow with Trina Block Johnson from Los Angeles. Um, she owns her own business and skincare, so she's going to be uh, addressing the inner beauty movement tomorrow and helping the sisters out with good skincare. Um, we take on the makeup and sometimes too much and we don't learn how to take care of our skin. So she's going to be mm -hmm. addressing the inner beauty movement tomorrow evening, Facebook Live. Um, the only thing I want to say, of course, thank you, uh, Sinful, for continuing to bless people. But um, what I really wanted to say was that uh, a mind is a very a powerful thing. And whether you believe you can do something or whether you believe that you can't do something, it's all the same energy that you're putting towards it. So as as a minority or whoever is watching, be more conscious about the type of thoughts that you have and be more conscious of the energy that you put out because it all holds the same weight. So try to invest more energy into believing that you can succeed. That's it. All right. Well, I appreciate all of you. Uh, it's been a blessing. Hope you guys live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. Everybody be blessed. Take your ass to bed. And I will see you later on this morning. Stay blessed. One. Have a good night.